Did I close Discord? <clears throat> Uh-oh, what Why? if you can't get back in? <laughs> Why would I do that? Why would I close Discord? Maybe you weren't thinking you just clicked it? Maybe. Weird. Okay, let's go to stream announcements. And let's say, at here, doing a Q&A. But the annou this announcement is because we now have a Minecraft server. Trying it out tonight if you're interested. Yeah, I heard it. It's okay. Where are all the reactions to this announcement? Where's the Ayaya's out? Am I gonna have to put the first Ayaya? Wow, putting your first Ayaya on, on a post? Not like cool. It's like buying your own book, right? Not that I would ever do that. Of course not. Of course not. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, there's a bunch of people here. How's it going, everybody? How's it going? So, uh, I, I just want to preface the stream by saying this could be a complete disaster. Uh, we tried out the server earlier today, and it, it runs, it's fine, but I don't know how laggy it's going to be. I don't know if there's going to be a lot of people that misbehave in chat, and we're going to have to ban a bunch of people. But um, I can show it to you right now. Go on multiplayer. I can't see chat now. I'm such a good streamer. Oh man, I'm such a good streamer. Just the best streamer, Lily. It's okay, that's why I'm here. Just the best streamer. Should be streamer of the year. All right. There you go. Now I can see chat. All right, this can go down here. We don't need to, need to see chat, right? It's just a stream. Okay, so first of all, let's see what they did, and then I will I will give you the server info. So if you want to get ready for the server info, then that's okay. All right, so multiplayer. So we're pinging the server. Oh no, it's down. <laughs> okay, it worked. Okay, this server went live like two hours ago. Joe does not eat ass. <sighs> Did you guys remember where I logged out and put this right here? <laughs> Welcome to the shaft. What? Did you guys make a big dick? <laughs> guys, this, this server is two hours old. How the fuck? Did you do all this in two hours? <laughs> Blame and dirt. Come on guys, the, the ass eating is implied. Come on, I don't need to say it. I don't need to say it. All right, here's the server info. Let me, uh, let me um, put it on. Uh, it's just a, an IP address. Do, 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 do. There's no password. For now and there's no domain name there will be a domain name in 24 hours like i said it's it's quite new all right so here you go that's it it's in chat right now maybe someone can paste it and and paste it throughout the uh the night but there you go there it is it's on the newest version of, of minecraft There you go. So if you want to join, there is a 50 people. Oh my God, there's so many people that joined already. There's a 50 people limit. Uh, if the server is stable at 50 people, I can possibly increase it and we'll see how stable it is. Um, the server I got is the second best one that that um, that, that provider had. Uh, I, I am Jad's Minecraft server uniting weaves one bridge at a time. Bridge Chan is here to unite us with LinkedIn. <laughs> You guys, what the fuck? You guys, what did you do? Wall Chan is here to protect Senpai. Oh, 
What is that? What is that? Anyway, um, so, uh, where was I? Yeah, like I said, I, I got the second best one that the server provider had. I am willing to upgrade it to the, the, to the best one if, if there's demand. Um, but I'm going to guess that tonight or next week is going to be the highest demand that we have. Uh, it's set to 50. It can potentially take 300. I don't think so. I think that's a lie. Uh, I think it's actually going to be more like 100, but we'll see how it goes with 50. And if it's stable, I will increase it. But if I do increase it, the server has to go down for a couple minutes. So just be aware of that. Um, can you share your in-game skin? I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just my Minecraft Sam. That's, that's, that's who I am. I'm just, I've never played this game before. Okay. Like, like, uh, well, that's a lie. I played it a little bit with, with Finn, um, last week or so. And that was the, the first time, uh, I'd ever played it. So I'm just Minecraft Sam. How do, how do I make the text not want like so i don't want to kill myself like how do how do i make the, the chat how's it going lily great yeah is it going okay awesome. yeah this is this is our community yeah <laughs> yeah i gathered and they're a lovely community aren't the server's they? on easy by the way i can make it into hard later um options uh chat settings scale ah there we go all right let's make it let's make it 30 and I can read it, and then you guys can probably still read it. But if it's if people start misbehaving, I will make it even smaller. All right. No, I want that a little bit bigger, actually. Name my sex type. All right. Options. Chat settings. For oh no, you killed me. Yeah, PVP is on, by the way. If we have to turn it off, we'll turn it off. I'm so bad at this chat settings. The server's full. Is it really full? Okay, so okay, let's give it a couple minutes and you guys can give me reports of latency if it's bad or not. Okay, and if it's if it's good, <laughs> this just it just made a giant wooden dick. Uh, if it's good, then we will we will up the cap to a hundred and we'll see if a hundred's fine. Okay. Seems pretty good to me. Who killed me? ICQA. That's what you get. Retaliation. That's what you get. <laughs> What's up here? Oh no, okay. Oh, you just slide down the ladder. All right. So welcome to the Q and A. We do occasionally answer questions. Why are you a Charmander? What? Super serious Q and A. Why everyone has a different skin. And I'm the only one with the Microsoft Sam skin. How, how do you get a different skin? Well, actually, I don't know. Look at the, the this guy. This I guy's fucking. Had time to prepare, but this guy's Jared Leto. Look at this guy. He's Jared Leto. This is a lumberjack. Like Kylo Ren, green-haired person. Ralph, Ralph Cloggs is his avatar. You see this shit? Look at look at this. Look at Ralph Cloggs. <laughs> oh, murderer! You murderer! Oh, ding! You Bowser? How are you, Bowser? God damn. All right, let's go to the top of the dick. We can't go to the top of the dick. Oh, we can. All right. You got to upload one through the Mojang website. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, it's been a couple of minutes. How is latency, everybody? Can you guys give me a latency report? Because if it's pretty good, I'm going to I'm gonna up the server cap to, to 75 or so. Is there uh is there fall damage in this game? There is. All right. Okay. Mostly fine, but there's lag when you break a block. Okay, let me see. Oh, yeah, there is a bit of lag there. Okay, maybe I should only update it to I don't know 75. 
Like, I, I, I can live with a little bit of lag when breaking a block, but, like, moving around, it's alright. Latency is real bad. Does it, is it worse because we're all in the same area? This is why I can't play on Sorrel, this is why I high end, high end PC. See, I don't know Minecraft, is, is that, is that awful? Or is that just like, yeah, you know, like, is that absolutely awful? That's pretty bad. That's real bad. Definitely not ideal. It's very annoying. It should be instantaneous. <laughs> okay, maybe we should, um, oh, people are throwing me shit. shit. It's completely awful, Joe. Joe gets worse when everyone's different place. Oh, it gets worse when everyone's different place? Okay, maybe we have to leave it at 50 then. Okay. Um, all right, so if, if the man stays high, if the server is full all night, then I will I will um, update the, the server to the to the higher setting for next week. So sorry, anybody who's, who's stuck on the outside looking in, but uh, people will probably will probably leave and I'm sure there's some people that got in real fast that are gonna get bored of it pretty pretty quick. They're gonna come in and be like, oh, it's Minecraft, you know what I mean? It might be because right now people are exploring new places at once and starting new places. Okay, so if it, if it gets better in, in a little while, then maybe we'll, we'll increase the cap. But for now, yeah, enjoy. Oh, you're like a, are you Isaac? Hello, hello. Oh, can someone show Lily? If you if you don't have anything equipped and you look down and you dig, it oh, I can do it, right? It just looks like you're jerking off. <laughs> right? Yeah. I showed you my dick, please respond. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, oh, we're so mature. So mature. So mature. Do you have any physical copies of your books and which one do you recommend I start with? We don't have any physical copies, no. Uh, there was originally going to be a physical copy of the book that released right after The Witcher was done, but um, there's a bunch of work that has to happen for it for that to happen, and I haven't had the time to do any of it. So it still might happen a little while after The Witcher video is done, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Ooh, someone is exploding something. Okay. It would be nice if it happened eventually, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't know when. So there are no there are no mods, there are no plugins, there's nothing. So if anyone would like to recommend me to do anything like that, oh man, what's this that you made? Welcome to the wheat fields. Close the door behind me, I'm very polite. Oh, this is nice. Who made all this? Joe new Minecraft version comes out in a few days. Don't forget to update what well, update the server. Okay, it Okay, I can do that. Whoops. Is this a pumpkin? Oh, cool. Oh, well, good job. All right, so let's go over to the questions. But first of all, I need Weeb Thanos. Ninja Poke. Oh, the lag. The Red Alchemist. Chat Noir. Yeah, the lag is pretty bad. I don't know. Maybe we even have to put it down. Maybe 50 people is too much. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll upgrade the server for next week. Wait. Oh. It's Nikito. Right? It's hard to tell. It's got to be, right? Murder my Well. <laughs> Look out for that one. What's over there? I want to see what's over there. Hey Joe, if you want, if you TP, if you TP me to you, I could show you the best skin in Minecraft. Denta Kirai. Hmm. What's all these boats here? You can have whatever in this chest with a capital E. Oh, there's so much stuff. Oh, nice. Thank you, kind stranger. It's usually not the people that like the game at this point. It's the rapid generation new chunks as people explore. You can preload the surrounding chunks at some point to negate to negate lag. Okay, is that only a one-time thing? After after this, we're we're done forever, or does it have to like does everyone individually have to preload it for themselves? Is that what has to happen? I don't know Minecraft. I remember someone telling me something like that, and I didn't understand it, and that's why we did a trial earlier, and then someone. 
so whoa this is hollow what the f oh it's dark souls wait is that a okay what uh oh we're dead what's the sign say Disappointment, ISS, -S, capital ISS, -S, and that had a capital E. Is it a code? What do you think, Lily? Is mm -hmm. it a code? It might be a code. It might be a code. Is that Peter Griffin? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh God, how's the sound by the way? Is the sound all right? Let me set up my windows and let's get this, this, this train wreck back on the rails. Oh my God. Oh shit. Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, so let's get my windows out. Um, and I need to say thank you to some people. Uh, I don't think I'm going to bother recording chat tonight. I think two chats at the same time is probably too much. You guys having fun? I hope I, I don't know Minecraft enough to know if this is a good thing or not. So apologies if this is like, like the, the jankiest bare bones server ever. But like, I um. This is more like a trial thing that we're that we're having. Mods when I don't know if, if anyone who who has been around for a while like if you if you are confident that if you message me I'm gonna be like oh yeah I know your name hey hey uh, and you want to be a mod and you and you are familiar with Minecraft then message me on Discord right now and I will check it in about ten minutes like if you are if you are absolutely certain that I'm gonna look at your name and go yeah I know you and I trust you and you know Minecraft enough to be <laughs> kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> then I will make you a mod and you can help. I'm mostly a VOD girl, but just want to say listening to you and Lily in the Q&As has really helped me deal with getting away from my toxic parents, so thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Re Ryuji? Just Ryuji, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Good luck Good with, uh, with continuing it's that. It's not yeah. easy. It's not easy at all. We both have to deal with that. If Joe reads this, the weebs have lost. <sighs> What are your thoughts on Game Awards? Well, I think it's a good idea to give recognition to developers that push the medium forward. It seems too often what is, what is the biggest IP gets the most attention. Yeah, for sure. It's fun, though. It's 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 like, it's not a, a really important thing, but it's fun. I wish that there was something that was a bit more... Um, I have to go to the bathroom. I, I wish there was something that was a bit more low-key, but still got attention. I know that seems like a contradiction, but like the, the Game Awards that we have right now are just so so corporate and i don't know enough about the 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 origin of the academy awards but i'm gonna guess that they weren't that corporate because nothing was that corporate back then you know when those things were were first formed like, like the game awards has has this like it's so steeped in in advertising and everything right so it, it's kind of marred but i think it's fun like i enjoy it and they're usually uh like a, a good time and now they have like uh, announcements and everything in them too, which also just kind of cheapens the awards to me. But I think it's it's an interesting night. But to take it seriously at all, I don't know. I kind of feel like it's already a lost cause though. Too many people already consider that to be okay. Whatever wins game of the war, game of the year there, that's game of the year, and 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 that's like like the the accepted one, and, and that's it. You know, like I, I feel like that's a that's a mistake. Even though like like I was happy that that God of War uh, won it last year. Uh, I, I'm really curious what will what will win this year because i kind of feel like it's going to be death stranding but maybe it's not is this a potato oh oh it's bread oh thank you for the bread thank you um, am i just vomiting right now oh okay cool all right back in vr all right do 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 all right the lag's pretty bad one one zero three seven. All right, so let's get into saying thank you to some people, and then we will 
Um, you know what? Let's read the first question first, and then we'll get into thanking, thanking people, because usually it takes us too long to get set up, and I think we're okay right now. So let's read, let's go for the first question um, on... Uh, let's go on Patreon. Yeah. Tiger V says, hey, Joe, quick questions. Hey, Tiger V, how's it going? Favorite horror literature books. Is Tiger V here? So... Horror, asking anything about horror is is difficult to answer because I, I I mean, it's not one of my strongest beliefs, like Joseph is a weeb, I, but I do believe that, that like everything is to do with art is subjective, but like horror is, is a lot more subjective. So something that is happy and, and, and like very joyful and even for kids, but it also happens to do with clowns. Um, is uh can be a horror experience for some people who have have a phobia for of clowns you know i think like phobias and fetishes have a lot in common and you, <clears throat> you if you haven't gone down that rabbit hole you have no idea what kind of weird shit people find horny so uh, sorry pe people find hot so uh you imagine the weird shit people find absolutely absolutely scared i think the weirdest thing i'm scared of is um hold on let me see if i can look it up because I don't think I, I always get this confused with something else. No, it's not okay. I thought it was thalassophobia. Um, I, I do have a little bit of that, but uh, it's a different phobia where it's it's a phobia of things that are arranged in in holes, like almost like a like a honeycomb, but not not. A, I don't find honeycombs creepy, but like in in nature. Um, the, like, tryptophobia, there it is, yeah, tryptophobia, thank you, thank you for that, let me see if I can put something on the screen for tryptophobia. So, for someone who's, who's afraid of, um, of, uh, th like, the ocean, you know, like, Subnautica is a big horror game, whereas if they're not, it's not at all. That looks like that thing on that Christmas yeah, that's, thing yeah. that you just said you didn't like. Here it is, so let me, let me put this on the screen. There's, like, a Christmas centerpiece that has, like pine cones and stuff on it and it has one of those kind of things this is very mild okay this is very mild it's like one of the first results you get when you look it up so this is tryptophobia if you're if you have tryptophobia then then like look away from the screen for like 30 seconds do, 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 do. oh shit i don't want to put a spoiler on the screen okay this so like I can look at this and I'm I'm fine with this. This this doesn't freak me out at all. But it, in in a certain like certain different versions of this, if it's in it's if it's in the kind of thing that that is uncomfortable or unusual, or if it's if it's stylized to be horrific in some way, I find this 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 kind of stuff quite unsettling. So you know a lot of people are gonna look at this and go, what the fuck? Like you're 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 crazy. Um, but that that sort of thing. I think I think honey honeycombs don't do it for me or beehives because they're they're uniform and it has to be kind of. Um, uh, in, in a different kind of uh, arrangement. So th that sort of thing ma makes you uncomfortable. So horror is very, very subjective. So when it comes to horror books, it's like your next question is about the world according to Garp. Uh, to me, the world according to Garp is is a horror story. And I think a lot of people are going to disagree with that, you know, if, if they've read it. But um, even when I first read it before I was even a father, uh, the world according to Garp is a horror story because because of what happens in, in that book. Uh, so I think that it's gonna be <laughs> Joe more kind of one wheat pillar. If you read this year weave. Oh no. Breaking case of Q and A. Alright. For Joe, top lolly. Open it up a chest, it might be great, but until then it's just a crate. Aw, oh, thanks. Damn. Hi Joe, have you heard of Disco Elysium? <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. So yeah, horror. Thank you, Top Lolly. So horror is very subjective. So like to me, like l l like th there are certain books that most people wouldn't consider horror that that are horrific to me. There are parts of Catch Twenty Two that are horrific. There are parts of any any war story that can be horrific. There's there's a lot of parts of sci-fi that are horrific. There's there's the whole. Um, the Forever War, which is a sci-fi story that I read somewhat recently, uh, can deal with with horror when it comes to um, 
going traveling so far forward in time without aging that the the universe and the world is nothing like you remember it being when you were alive when you were, well sorry when you were first born so you have to deal with like your own species and your own society becoming alien to you you know what i mean like is is that horror because i kind of feel like that's 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 a uh that's an exploration of horror but um probably the like i, I read some stephen king and i enjoy his work but um, like my favorite of his is the stand. And I would say that that counts as horror. I would say the stand is probably, probably my favorite Stephen King. What do you think? What's your favorite Stephen King? Carrie. Carrie? But Carrie's I wouldn't say that's horror. I haven't, I haven't, um, I haven't read Carrie. Um, I think, I think that the book that creeped me out the most, which we've spoken about on stream before, uh, is house of leaves because the, the book itself is haunted. And there were a couple scenes that got to me in house of leaves, uh, but if we're talking about horror, like horror experiences that are uh, like not specifically tied to horror, horror literature, that are my favorite, then then we're probably going to be like back to 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 Catch Twenty Two, um, to the World of Corn and Garp. I, lo I love the World of Corn and Garp. Hey, Boba Fett. That's that um, that kind of area. A stand, the stand, the stand by Stephen King. It's I think it's his. No, it's not his longest book because the the JFK one is longer, and I think he might even a longer one than that. One of his Dark Tower books is probably longer than the stand. The uncut That's version. Been wild, though, I think. The uncut version of the stand might be might be uh, his longest though. Hmm. We recently both read. Um, Oh, thank you for the diamond hoe. We both recently read uh, The Haunting of Hill House, the book, and we enjoyed that somewhat, but we felt like it didn't end very well. You agree with me there, Lily? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we felt like it didn't end very well. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that, that kind of fits into like that horror. Like the, the the typical horror. There's been like there's been horror books like that I've read that I've been like, this isn't this isn't horrific at all, really. You know, it's just it's just a little bit disturbing. And I don't know if that's because I'm just completely fucked up. There's been a lot of Stephen King and Anne Rice and and that those kind of books where I'm like, okay, this is this isn't like like I know Stephen King doesn't always write horror books, but it's like I, I read them and I'm like, this they are meant to be horror. Like the market is horror. I'm like, this this isn't doing it for me at all. Well, again, I think it's if it hits you on a personal level, right? Then it's more more likely to be frightening, mm -hmm. not just disturbing. Like it, it has to hit you on kind of a, like a psychological and and you know, <clears throat> like multiple levels. Stephen King lost all credibility to me when he said H.P. Lovecraft can write a scene. See, I, I've read some 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 Lovecraft, and I didn't really find him scary. I, I was interested, and I enjoyed what I read of H.P. Lovecraft. I read um, uh, Shadow Over Innsmouth, and I read another one too, but I can't remember what it is. Uh, and I and I thought that was interesting, but I didn't find that horrific. I didn't find that all that scary. In in fact, I th I thought the shadow the ending of Shadow Over Innsmouth was quite disappointing and kind of and quite a oh really like. Um, Someone else just brought something up that I've read too, and I forgot about it. Um, I have no mouth, and I'm a scream is pretty horrific for me. Yeah, see that that's more horrific for me because it's it's meant to be horror, but it's also uh, I, it's a situation that I can I can more more imagine myself being in, and and or I can just. I can I can connect more to this idea of being caught in this like limbo state of of torture. So, it's it's like the t typical standard oh scary thing is going to get you and then you're dead and it's like okay well then i'm dead you know it's 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 really really scary but then it would be over but then it's like those kind of things where it's like yeah even you're going to be tortured you're going to be killed but then it just keeps going you know the ride never ends so that sort of thing so that that would be more effective for me and i would i, I enjoyed that quite a bit more i was really disappointed in the game because i thought the the story was so much better than than the um than the game. Someone else is saying House of Louise is really good in chat. House of Louise was very interesting to me, but uh, I would say that's like like an experience sort of book, you know? Like it's it's uh it's an unusual. I've never read anything else like that before or since. But there is a bunch of just sex scenes in that book that are really superfluous to me that I that are supposed to show you the the madness of the, of the main character, you know? I'm trying to think, there was another, I read the, I read all the questions before, and there was another book that I remembered, um, thinking, you know, it's not really meant to be a horror book, but it turns out that way for me, and I can't think of it now. A lot of my stories end up being horror. Uh, like, whenever, whenever I wrote a story, um, uh, there was always this, this pull that I might end up veering into horror, um, 
spoilers for, for my own book, but like, like Wizard and the Dragon is a horror story. You know, like it, it takes a while for you to, to get there, but th that's a horror story. It's not really a fantasy story. It's a horror story. So it's, it's that sort of like, it, it doesn't happen to be like, I don't plan it that way. It just kind of ends up being horror. So I just have this, like this correction, this auto correction that's just going to veer me into, into horror. Um, all the time, you know? Can you think of anything else? What's your favorite horror story apart from, like, your favorite Stephen, Stephen no, King's Carrie, but yeah, do you I have one really that's better than that? Yeah, I don't really find that scary, though. For yeah. Stephen King, I haven't read anything of his that really scared me. Maybe disturbed me a little bit. Um, Roadwork is another one he wrote. He wrote it as, as Richard Bachman, and that was pretty good. That's kind of more psychological. There's, like, a split personality thing going on, which I thought was disturbing in a way especially if you have your own mental health issues like that's mental health stuff can be disturbing if, if it kind of hits you on a certain level right but mm -hmm. i wouldn't say any of it scared me like like i couldn't sleep or i had nightmares about it anything with dead animals scares me because i really don't like dead animals anything with home invasions or something scares me I, i'll have nightmares about that but i was thinking the bloody chamber i told you i wanted you to read that book it's a book i think it's by angela carter and it's a bunch of short stories and they have kind of a fairy tale sort of aspect to them, but they're warped. Like they're, they're very, they're very dark. They deal with like torture and stuff like that. And they're, again, I don't know if I would have nightmares about it, but when I think horror, I think of them. Mm -hmm. I read that in university when one of my classes, I've got it for that and I loved it. It was one of the best books that I had to read that I actually really, really enjoyed. And I took a horror terror class, and again, we read Dracula, we read Interview with the Vampire, we read Carmela, we read all these, um, you know, t t traditionally, you know, more, more horror type stories. But, but I didn't find, find them scary. Any, it's I more, didn't find them. It's more stuffy and interesting, right? Like stuffy maybe, and interesting. Together. Maybe, I I don't know about Interview with the Vampire. Like again, I didn't find. But I was thinking maybe when Dracula and and Carmela were written, you know, when they were maybe there was more. I don't know. I don't know if they don't get to me because they're not scary enough or if they don't get to me because I'm not from that time. And it, it, mm -hmm. there was nothing. Yeah, that, I, I've that's... been exposed to different things since, you know? So. Yeah, we have much more exposure to, 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 to sensory kind of assaults from media. Uh, yeah, like... The Haunting of Hill House, the book, which was written, what, like 1960 or something around there, right? It was yeah, written quite a while yeah. ago. Compared to the show, the show gave me nightmares. The show will still give me nightmares that we watched on Netflix, the the series, mm -hmm. right? right? And, and the book just... The book came first, but the book didn't come close for me. So maybe if I had read it first, and maybe if I had read it 50 years ago, you know, maybe it would have touched me differently than it did this time. I don't know. Someone's saying, is talking about Cell by Stephen King. Yeah, Cell is really bad. Cell is probably the worst book that Stephen King has ever has ever. Uh, written i think that i've read at least uh, i haven't read all this stuff i'm not the biggest stephen king fan i do i do enjoy his work but um I, i'm i'm never like oh fuck yeah another stephen king book's coming out it's just like yeah i i, I enjoy his work but it's no, not a big deal um but honey hill's book would you agree that honey hill's is is the the best book that you've ever like the best best depiction in a book of someone going crazy mm -hmm. from their own perspective well, that's what i said about mental health stuff right mental yeah. health stuff can be really really make you really uncomfortable and it made me uncomfortable, but did it scare me? Like, not really. Sorry. What? No, him. Oh. <laughs> I find stuff that is more, um, I would, I would agree with you about Gart being, being horrific. Yeah. Um, and there's another, uh, I just reread Dark Places by, uh, Gillian Flynn, who wrote Gone Girl. Okay, that's a question. Is Gone Girl horror? For, for what one person does to someone else without without I would like, say again let's, has, let's say nothing else apart from that like it could, could be horrific again yeah. I'm not like it's gonna give me nightmares but if I had personal history with something like that it might give me nightmares right mm -hmm. if I'd been in a similar situation or relationship or if something like that what she does to other people had happened to me or not to someone that I know maybe it would have given that to me but something like dark places I would say is more of a mystery. It's it's like a, it's a murder mystery, but I would say it's kind of a traumatic murder mystery. So would, again, what's really horror in terms of if it has 
qualities of something that greatly disturbs you enough that you worry about it. Like Garp, you would worry about that, right? You would worry about something like that happening to you. Mm -hmm. Is that enough to make it to make it horror? You know, it, it, that to me is more scary than anything Stephen King has, has ever written that I've ever read. I, I think we can end on this. It, it all comes back to your own subjective experience, you know, like with, or, or your own, subjective is, is too much of a loaded word, your own, your own personal experience in that I think that they're like another John Irving book. John Irving is the, the author of the world according to Garp. We're going to talk about it next. Um, I, I, I think that depending on your, your personal experience growing up that until, until I find you could be, could be more horrific than anything else because, um, Mm -hmm. and, and until I find you, uh, spoilers for it, like moderate spoilers for until I find you, you find out that the, the main character has misremembered his entire childhood because the mother was lying to him mm -hmm. relentlessly. So you have, and we talk about gaslighting sometimes on, on, on the stream, you know, like if you were gaslit when you were a kid and you were raised with these parents that just relentlessly lied to you, it's having a character go through that, even though it doesn't have the same horror, like, ooh, ooh, like pangs to it, it's still kind of like, it might hit you really hard and you might be like, oh my God. And, but for someone else that has more horrific pangs to it, there's, um, uh, uh, somewhat similar again without spoiling or anything uh, the girl on the train is is um that mm -hmm. might be like that might be one it. of the most powerful yeah. horror, horror experiences you'll ever have because it's the same kind of thing even though it, I, I wouldn't really call that a horror book so i think we'll, we'll come back to that um but i enjoy i, I enjoy like fucked up stories but I, I guess that, I don't know, I think, I don't think that the written word really scares me all that much. Like, like I said, the, the most disturbed I ever got was, I think, House of Leaves. There's just something about House of Leaves that I, that kind of really unsettled me in, in some of the scenes. There, there was a scene where I think he was in, the main character was in some sort of cathedral. And I remember there being, um, it sounded like he was being haunted by something. And that kind of, that kind of disturbed me a bit. And then the, everything to do with the house is just kind of like... Uh, I know you. D oh shit! Um, best boyfriend Danger Rampa too, apart from the Guido. The Omen was a bit freaky. The Omen. Yeah. It's Harry Potter. He was a bit. That was a bit freaky. Um, it didn't give me nightmares. Freaky, but like disturbing, freaky. And have you ever read? Um, we ha we have it actually. Audrey Rose. I don't know who wrote it. No. It's an older book. It was made into a movie, I think. Rosemary's Baby, too. Those are kind of... But again, not like nightmare scary. Just Audrey Rose is about um, a little girl who... Um, this strange man comes into their lives and starts claiming that she is actually... Has the reincarnate of his dead daughter. Mm -hmm. And it goes to trial and like... Oh, I've she's heard. having nightmares and it's like she, it's like it's true and looks like they're losing their daughter and it sounds completely ridiculous but it's actually people are believing it you know okay. and it's it's so on the surface on one level it's like that doesn't sound that scary but when you consider like a little girl who's completely traumatized who's having nightmares about her death you know every night that's the kind of you know read that in the dark a little bit that was a little bit you know unsettling so I don't, I don't know. I don't think I've read enough traditional horror horror books. Sorry, I wish I could I could say more. There's, I I need to do a lot of reading. There's there's, like, there are a lot of things that I haven't read that I really need to mm -hmm. to to get to get done. You know, um, everyone chat is saying I need to eat. How do how do I eat chat? How do I get food? Can I just cut this up and and turn it into into to bread or what? Like how do I, Minecraft horror? Minecon is definitely horror. <laughs> I once read a short story about a man trapped in a lighthouse after a nuclear war who begins to go insane with his alarm clock telling him to kill himself. Even that still scares me more than anything. Okay. That could. Yeah. That sounds interesting. That could be creepy, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank I you, like the Red Altar. I like the idea of an alarm clock doing that. Tropical fish, rotten flesh, raw cod. Okay, do I do I go cook it or do I just eat it raw? Raw chicken. All right, what could go wrong? I can't think of anything else. I'm trying to think now, but... Oh, no, we fell. I think... I can't think of a book that has ever scared me really badly. Like, I can think of a movie or, or Hill House. 
Fuck Hill House. <laughs> really did a number on you, huh? Oh, yeah. It's cooking, Chad. It's cooking. It's cooking. All right. So the next question from, from Tiger V is related to books. If you want to go to that. Sorry that, if that wasn't the best answer. It's really hard. Um, so there's probably a, like, after this is done, I'm probably going to remember a book I read a long time ago and I'm going to go shit that that would have been perfect. So like, it's really hard when the question is, is broad in general and don't, don't take that in to be like, it's a bad question because it is an interesting question. It's just that I, I'm, I, it makes me think, okay, well, what, what's every single book that I've ever read? You know what I mean? Like, and suddenly I'm thinking, oh shit, like, um, is there something I'm forgetting? You know, like when we talk, when we spoke about horror media the other week, I was really, really angry that the next day, um, if uh, that I didn't talk about Black Mirror because I think that Black Mirror is, is probably the most effective horror horror like piece of media that I that I've ever gone through, um, in multiple episodes even. You know, like I haven't watched the new stuff. I've only watched the the original two seasons or whatever it was. Um, but I think Black Mirror is like, like really, really got to me in a lot of ways. So I was really angry that I, that I hadn't talked about that, um, on the stream. So yeah, sorry about that. Anyway, go ahead. I read the world according to Garth. Thanks to your recommendations. Did you like it? Is, is Tiger V here by the way? I, I asked and I no, never I saw didn't see anything. Can you give some more thoughts on it? Why you like it, etc. What you think of the spoilers, spoilers, car accident, spoilers, spoilers. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So we're going to talk about spoilers for World According to Garp. I will tell you when we get to the spoiler part, which is probably going to be pretty soon. So uh, if, if you haven't read the book and you really want to, uh, World According to Garp is probably my second favorite book. I've only ever read it once, though, and I'm a little nervous about reading it again for, for reasons that will become clear very soon. You've read it, right? Mm -hmm. So World of Crown and Garp is, is by John Irving, who is my favorite author. Um, and uh, it was the first book of his that I ever read. Um, surprisingly, I have not read The Cider House Rules, but you have, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't read The I Cider have, House Rules. but I like Garp more than The Cider House Rules. Garp is my favorite. Until I Find You is pretty good. Widow for a Year is pretty good, too. I think when, uh, Until I Find You is probably... Owen Meany. Yeah. Was probably my, for Owen Meany is my favorite. My least favorite of, of, of those. Um, so World Corner Garp is about... Uh, he, he is about a man named Garp who has a mother who is a... Uh, Jenny Fields, right? Mm -hmm. That's her name? So she is a, a fictional, um, I think, first wave feminist, I think. Like... Uh, it, like got pregnant as a nurse in World War II, um, and you know it's 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 very kind of kind of a weird character that in order to get pregnant she essentially rapes a guy in hospital <clears throat> and to, to to make Garp and who is the main character and the reason why his name is is Garp is because his dad who was in a, in a World War II um, he was a he was a, a gunner right I think he was a gunner um, he was a gunner and uh, their plane got like ripped up um, like shot to shit in while they were doing uh, like a, a run somewhere uh, in World War or two and uh he was like like pretty much found like <clears throat> mostly dead in the gunner seat furiously masturbating just saying garp 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 because because what he had gone through had just completely made him you know a child like he 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 was pretty much mostly brain dead after this thing happened in world war ii um and she, jenny fields i I, th I think rapes him in in uh in hospital, like she, she's a nurse and she's looking after him. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not a very violent scene. It might even be like, you know, if, if you're not, if you're kind of sheltered, like you might not even realize that it's rape, you know, like, but yeah, she, she rapes him and she gets pregnant cause she doesn't want anything to do with, with, um, like a, she doesn't want to be tied down to anybody. Um, and she gets pregnant and they have, she has, a, she's a boy and the boy's name is Garp and Garp is the main character. Uh, so it's the world according to Garp and it's, it's Garp's <clears throat> life. John Irving has a, uh, a tendency to write books like uh, like Charles Dickens, where it's like this is the character, this is the character's entire life. Sometimes it will happen like before they're born. Um, sometimes it's told a little out of order, but mostly it's this is the character from birth. This is all the way to not always death, but uh, to a, a point of closure much later in their life. There's usually quite big time skips and everything. Um, so the Rolling Horn Garp is 
quite funny. Most of John Irving's books are, are funny, despite being these very, very dense, very carefully con constructed novels. Um, <clears throat> but the trick that that World According to Garp does, uh, which is something I try to do with with a lot of my work, I think because I read this book, but I think I did it before that, but maybe that just might be wishful thinking on my part, uh, is that uh, World According to Garp, John Irving blindsides you with just 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 the most beautiful arrangement of details that you think just do not matter at all and then they matter they matter a lot like all of a sudden in the space of just one chapter i think i've only read it once it's been a while it just like it just all comes crashing down and you're just like like at the end you're just like fuck so so what happened this is a spoiler this is what happens um is that uh garp uh ends up being in a relationship with a woman who i can't remember her name so let me look it up real quick so i can say her name world according to garp i'm afraid to read this book again uh after becoming a dad um is it helen helen Holm? that sounds right so garp uh ends up being in a relationship with helen home and they have uh, two kids, uh, two boys, actually, uh, and they are having problems in, in their in their marriage, and um, they they aren't getting along all that well. And there's a lot of infidelity on both sides. You know, he uh, Garp is cheating on Helen. Helen is is cheating on Garp. Um, I think it's that he cheats on her a little bit more and it, and it seems like the theme of the book is going to be how you deal with infidelity and how you deal with marriage and staying with 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 someone for 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 so long when you know you might even be reluctant to get together and to, to begin with that's what it's, it seems like it's going for and then it's not it's it's about it's about um it's about parenthood and it's about how, how all the fears of what it's like to be a parent um so as they're having all of these kind of marital disputes and, and all this kind of bullshit that's happening to them as they're wrapped up in their own kind of kind of petty little squabbles and lives and everything, um, there's all these details about the house that they live in and the cars that they have and how the the um, the the car in the, the what's it called the the gear stick is it is it gear stick or gear sh gear shaft what is it? I don't drive it's gear stick right gear shift gear shift it's sure. it has so the gear like a manual drive car and helen's car doesn't have the, the knob on it because it was it was like um it was second hand so the knob is gone off the gear shift so it's it's been like broken off at some point so there's this detail that whenever she's like in in her broody kind of like i don't know why i'm married to this man i don't know why i like like i, I i'm, I'm kind of unhappy with my life and i'm very pensive um she likes to she likes to like dig her hand into like the the broken off hilt of this gear shift and it just kind of bites into her hand a little bit um and then there's this, this similar line with driving where the <clears throat> Garp likes to turn off the car as as he comes in home at night and he lets the car just kind of like just drift into the driveway because it's got like a slope down to it there's all these details like that that feed into this like how how their lives aren't imagined <clears throat> sorry where they imagined and that they don't re they're not really satisfied and this all these little things that are like oh wow this this is cool this is some, this is some good character building and then while they there are once again being <clears throat> unfaithful to each other uh these these two things collide when garp comes back after driving the kid driving the kids home and in her car instead of his car and she doesn't realize that helen is in his car in the driveway giving her boyfriend a blowjob and garp has the two kids in the in in the in her car in the back seat he turns the engine off comes into the back rear ends the car that she's in and the one of the boys just is just immediately killed in the back seat and the other one goes forward and his face his eye goes into the jagged point of the of the gear shift that's been that's been said like that um and it's it's just brilliantly presented with this idea that the book is going to be about these unfaithful people that are um, ignorant and like maybe they shouldn't have had kids and they're trapped in this thing and then it's just like this this fucking just in the space of a chapter it just becomes this whole like oh what the fuck like they've just completely fucked up their lives they've like what what the fuck were they even doing you know it's and it's all about the the dangers of getting wrapped up in your own problems with w instead of your kids and I don't know. I don't think I'm doing it justice by, by describing it that way because, you know, it's never going to do justice because it's, it's meant to be told through thousands and thousands and thousands of words over, over like hundreds and hundreds of pages. But 
the fact that the whole book is just building up to that that big moment and it just just subverts everything that happened before then and then you realize that oh yeah this is what it's been about the whole the whole time um is just incredible to me and like the fact that it was it was done over that long of a story too like that is a very very long book it's like great expectations um <clears throat> is uh yeah is is pretty pretty good um i don't remember really enjoying the the end end to that like the final ending i don't really enjoy i don't remember enjoying that that much as as much as that one to me like the the story ends in the, in the next couple chapters after that and um i would think that if i'm remembering correctly the, the story kind of runs out of steam after that would you agree like it's just sort of like honestly <clears throat> i don't remember the ending of that book. The, the ending of the book has he gets assassinated i remember the beginning you know with jenny and i remember all the stuff with helen and i remember the kids but mm. i don't remember what happens after that? Like I've completely lost the ending of that. If, I could read it again now and it would be new again. You it's know? because of his mom. If I remember correctly, it's because his, his mom is becoming more and more of a, of a renowned feminist. Um, even though a lot, a lot of what she, she believes, I think wouldn't even fly uh, with, with what I, I've gauged from today's like feminists. Um, but yeah, like she's a renowned feminist and I, and I think there's, there's someone who really hates her that just, just kills Garp. Like, uh, and I think it's a, it's it's not even a spoiler that's said fairly on in the book. It's like later on when he was assassinated or something. Like mm. it's it's like it's it's said early on. Take a sand, take a sand, leave a sand. Take a sand, leave a sand. Yeah, but it's that that kind of careful construction of of um of of just plot details, the building up over this long long story with the quality kept so high. And and the prose is very entertaining. Like, like John Irving is a very funny writer. At the same time, he's he's very witty. Um, it's not like slapstick humor, but it's not all that highbrow either. Um, it's it's really impressive to me, and I I just like even even thematically, you know what I mean? Like it's it's it just works really really well. So, um, I uh, yeah, that's one of my favorite books. Do you have anything to add to that? No. No. Douglas Adams says that's my favorite thing about its works, his jokes and scenes of the chapters relying, relying remembering the details laid out chapters ago. They happen with no fanfare, so if you miss it, it's gone. Or you'll be lost. Yeah, yeah the, I really um, enjoy that about it, but his uh, writing in general. Uh, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency is 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 one of, is the only book of Douglas Adams that I've read, and I, I loved it for that reason. Yeah, like that that was great. Yeah, that's what I try to do in 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 my books. I'm I'm nowhere near as artistic about it. You know, like my my books are primarily primarily meant to be you know very entertaining. They're not meant to, meant to be art. Um, but like I, I I try to have a lot of details that come back maybe like books later even. You know, it's 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 always like okay lay the foundation, but try not to make it clear that you're laying a foundation. Have it just be a natural progression part of the story that's that sort of thing um yeah sorry this is kind of boring by the way what, what i'm just just running around uh the q a's are just meant to be me like um answering the questions and we're lagging too all right i think that's all i can say about about the world according to garp i should read it again but like i said i'm scared too because i was um i was upset reading that book and i think i the first time i read the book i was 2021 20, so not even close to being a dad uh so if i remember all the details from that like 13 years later that well then then go me but um like i uh how do i get out okay i like i i i'm kind of afraid to read that again now that i am a dad oh i'm gonna steal your shit no i won't yeah so that's it uh, is there anything that anyone would like me to be doing in the game right now while I'm running around? Like, should I be like exploring more? Should I be seeing more stuff? I'm gonna die, and people are gonna 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 steal my uh, my diamond stuff that Top Lolly so graciously gave. Find food. I'm trying. I have food, but I can't cook it because I don't have I don't have any coal, and the wood's not burning for some reason. So you think the book is something I could enjoy, appreciate without much care for parenthood, marriage, romance in, in real life? Well, I enjoyed it when I was when I was younger, um, but you know, e even even back then, I was already in, you know effectively married to Lily. So uh, I don't know. Like it, it's, I think I think that John Irving is is a talented enough writer that you can pretty much uh, enjoy you know anything that he that he's he's written, even if it's not something that you directly relate with. But you'll like it more if if you have. 
I think you'll appreciate the buildup once it happens. You'll still have that what the fuck kind of. Someone take your pork chop so I can cook That's my tropical what this fish. That's all about, kind of thing. Or is the pork chop for me? Is the pork chop for me? Which is he does that, and, and all the books that I've read have that same quality. He does it really well in, in a prayer for Owen Meany too. That's why I like that book so much. How do I throw? I haven't read a prayer for Owen Meany. I want to. You have to read that book. I have to read a lot of books. I know, but you have to read that one. Oh no. Oh no. Get in the water. I've never written fan fiction. Do you or Lily ever wrote fan fiction? You no. Haven't had no. Huh, I think I'm gonna die. It's hard getting food. Oh no. Oh, I got killed. I got murdered. I don't know if it's that I'm really tired, because mm -hmm. I'm really tired, mm -hmm. um, or what, but this game is fucking with my eyes if I watch too much. Is it bothering you? Yeah, it bothers me a little bit too, yeah. It's kind of... I'm okay if I look away, you know, if I keep like, glancing at it, but if I look at it too much, it's making me have a bit of a headache. But it might just be me that I'm tired. I only had, like, what, like three hours sleep last night? <laughs> So that could be. That's that's that could be that's, it. That's the sun know. helping, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's say thank you to some people, and then we will we will go into the next question. Uh, hopefully that was okay, Tiger V. And I think I'm just gonna start exploring a little bit more. Where do I die? I'm sure that all most of my shit got looted, but maybe something got left behind. What what is damaging me right now? <laughs> it does that to me too, but that's because I'm absolutely shit faced. Well I'm not, but I hope you're enjoying it at least. Crime is happening. One of us should be enjoying it. Oh, you don't need to throw my, throw my stuff back. It's okay. The bay bushes have thorns on them. Oh, okay. That makes sense, actually. All right. What's my IQ? Uh, 85, which I'm pretty proud of. You know, 85 is pretty high. Almost, almost perfect, you know? 15 away from perfect. I'm happy with that. Do 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 do. Uh, thank you to the following people. If I can find it. Oh, top lolly, gifting to Shoda. Oh man. Thank you to Shivio Star, e. Evan Walker, Drew Carrymore, King of Dunces, the Seraph Seraph of Chaos. Act Rick two three four that guy Kitty double chinned Chilla, <laughs> uh, Yopi Pie yeah, sorry Yop Pie or Yopi Gonzen zero 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 uh, and Vorayak for subbing while the stream was down. Thank you very much. And since we started, thank you Isolated Spaceman, hmm. who's Jaime, right? Isn't this Jaime? Is it? Go Ghostly Sun became Isolated Spaceman, right? I can't keep track of all the names. I'm sorry. I hope it is. Free summon for seven months. Hi, Joe and Lily. Hope you're doing great. Does seven months worth some cringe on Mad Fred, Mad, Man, Mandred's voice? Manfred's voice, Kappa. Oh, seven months in the dragon's den. That's Manfred's voice, right? Too many voices at this point. All four of them, not including my own. <laughs> Thank you, I said Space Man. CB Turk has resubscribed for 22 months. Damn. Wait, you're a streamer? PogChamp, I know, right? I know. I'm a Minecraft streamer now. I've streamed Minecraft. That, don't I get, like, an achievement unlocked on Twitch now that I've that I've streamed Minecraft? I think that, uh... I think that counts for something, right? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, 
<laughs> Thank you, CB Turk. 22 months in uh, the waifu warehouse. Uh, Lena Walsh has resubscribed for two months. Hey, Anderson JPH, will you be streaming Outer Wilds or Disco Elysium? If yes, do you know roughly when? Uh, Outer Wilds for sure, some point in 2020, but Disco Elysium, I've never heard of that. Hold on, let me, let me look it up. Disco Elysium. Disco Elysium. <clears throat> No, I don't think I want to play this. No, I don't think I want to play this. It's kind of weird. Uh, I don't know when we're going to play Disco Elysium. We'll try it at some point in 2020, and we'll we'll see how it goes. We'll do we'll do a stream, and if people want me to continue, then then I will continue. But it's going to be a lot of reading, but we'll see. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Lena Walsh. Uh, thank you, Supreme Cool, for the 22 month resub with JPH Fine. I like JPH Fine. And Jep. Yep. Thank you, Supreme Cool. 22 months in the Dragon's Den. The Lucid Streamer has subscribed for the first time. That's a lie. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Thank you for the resub, Lucid Streamer. However, many months in Pout Patrol, the Rubber Dub Sub Club. Thank you, thank you. I am 999 has resubscribed for 18 months. This is the world your followers created for you. Everything in it is in line with your ideas. Welcome to the hell of your own making. <laughs> yeah. I think I think you might be right. Yeah. Much. I think you might be right. How come you guys haven't like recreated something from Danganronpa yet? Or, or I don't know. Uh, oh man, look at the water. Or something from Dark Souls. So if anyone, again, if anyone has any suggestions for me to, um, to put on a, like, like creative mode, or if you want me to put on like, like, no one can destroy your shit mode in a certain area or if people can claim their own land i don't know i don't know how it works like let me know and uh i i'm willing to mess with the settings like i'm not married to the way that this is right now so i like i, I don't know like I, I i like like this is literally the third time i've ever played minecraft ever you know so uh i'm i'm uh i'm a noob i'm a noob oh uh, hey Elsaroth, how's it going are you in vr or are you in actual actual game Whispers to you, Makuro Ikusaba, the 16th student. <laughs> Land claim equals plug-in, though? Yeah, I don't mind doing that. Creative mode will be a total disaster. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you, IO999-1000. Uh, Devoid of Skill has resubscribed for three months. Steve Chan, best waifu, don't at me. Oh, is that... Is, it's Minecraft Steve, isn't it? Not Minecraft Sam. All right, my bad. I knew that. I knew that. I'm, just, I'm still surprised you guys have done, done all that this so quickly you were just though. asking for something from dark Souls, so i showed up oh uh, okay let me put my my armor back on there you go it's kind of like a kind of like a, a, a bikini uh thank you to skill uh weeb weeb with eyes of blue oh man is that like blue eyes white dragon thank you uh weeb with eyes of blue for the new sub welcome to Welcome to Pout Patrol. Welcome to the Secret Weep Society. I think you'll fit in. Thank you, Ozar99, for the 21 month resub. Hope you're having fun, Joe. I'm having fun. Yeah, this is interesting to me. Uh, I don't think I would like this game by myself. Like, I played a little bit with Finn, and after an hour, I was bored. So maybe I'm not playing right, but when I played Terraria, I felt like there was more like of a constant progression thing I could go for, and I was constantly unlocking new stuff and tools and everything. Whereas in this game, I felt like I was unlocking more stuff to build more on the creative side, and that was kind of not really my area of interest for this so i don't know maybe it's not for me maybe i need to give it more of a chance maybe terraria is better I, I, is that a controversial opinion i'm gonna guess it is but um i i you know like not not really not really for me i just failed dark souls in december oh did you yeah oh shit. i said dark souls when you're not supposed to say dark souls so now people in chat have to drink because i said dark souls dark souls dark souls dark souls they have to drink yeah they're every, having a drinking game right now every and time if, you and say every dark time souls? i say dark souls i'm gonna kill somebody okay alcohol poisoning right now. i think you've pr probably killed someone at this point yeah yeah so sorry that i said dark souls sorry you guys can you read this real quick for me Lily? Mm -hmm. what does it say Sorry, I must not have had my contacts in. I can't read it. Oh, that. you can't read it? It's oh. just a blur. Oh, okay. Convenient. Convenient. I can only read chat. <laughs> uh, why do you think Death Stranding will win the Game Awards? Because 
from the criteria that they claim they have, Death Stranding shouldn't have even been nominated. So the fact that it was nominated at all makes me think that there might be some shenanigans going on. So if it if it is, like, I, I feel, feel like it has a, a strong chance of winning. But, you know, maybe it's just a nomination as kind of like a nod toward Kojima. And it's like, okay... The game is way too controversial for there, there to be that much agreement on it so soon after it first came out along like with, with their group of um, like journalists and, and everything they do to, to for the deliberations of this. So I don't think that that should have been uh, nominated. But at the same time, I kinda, I'm kind of surprised that Control in the Outer Worlds is on there too. So I don't know. I, I might be wrong. But uh, I feel like it's, it's going to win just because of how memed up it was over the game awards uh but honestly like it should be sekiro but i don't think sekiro is going to take it like of those games sekiro is is clearly the best to me but obviously uh people are going to disagree uh, i think death stranding is absolutely going to get best directing or best director so uh maybe it'll get that and it won't get best game and something else would get game of the year i just hope smash bros doesn't get it because that's kind of boring to me it's like okay whatever you know like eh. I don't know. I haven't played it though, so I'm talking completely out of my ass right now. So sorry about that. I'd be fine with DMC five taking it. Not even nominated. It's not even nominated. <clears throat> Next year, hey Nick. How's it going, Nick? Uh, thank you to Kappa Calculus. I'm I'm behind on this, and then I should check my messages and see if there's anybody that wants. Yeah, ten to... minutes, right? <laughs> yeah, ten minutes. I'm I'm just the best. An hour streamer. later. Thank you, Kappa Calculus, for the for the four month resub. Thank you very much. Uh, four months in the Kanichiwa crew. <laughs> thank you, Kappa Calculus. Uh, thank you, Sky Caesar, for the for the twenty two month resub with Minecraft JPH for real. Yeah, for real. But we're not really we're we're kind of spectating Minecraft more than we're playing Minecraft. Can you can you mine the clouds? If you go up there, can you like get into the clouds in this game? Hmm. I'm not sure about that. Thank you, Sky Caesar. Thank you, thank you. Twenty two months in the Dragon Sen. Uh, Royal Gray has subscribed for the first time on on this train wreck of a stream. I'm surprised. Thank you very much, Royal Gray. Welcome to. Uh, do you want to give a claw fist? Actually, you don't know a claw I fist. I think it claw fist is deserved. Claw fist, okay. Claw fist. Claw fist from Lily. Thank you, Royal Gray. Seventy seven hockey has resubscribed for eighteen months with Joe Craft Pock. <laughs> Finn calls it Minecraft. He can't say craft, but he doesn't say outright crap. My Minecraft. So. Mm. I have returned Diamond Sword Chan to its rightful husbando. Make use of it. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, thank you, thank you for that, and and thank you again, uh, seventy seven hockey for the eighteen month resub. Uh, Parslow had one nine five has resubscribed for ten months with happy Q and A. Yeah, sorry that we missed last week's. Uh, I was feeling really tired, but then I I was like, okay, I'm awake now. We can do it. And then Finn was um, Finn was a a, a bit sick, so uh, we couldn't risk it. But we probably would have been okay actually if we'd done it. But we didn't want to risk it. It's not not good, not fair to him, and not fair to you guys either. Uh, thank you, Parcel195, for, for the 10 months resub, 10 months in the Dragon's Den. Uh, RenJ has resubscribed for two months with, I first sub because I heard you were a weeb streamer. I resub because I was right. <laughs> oh, 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 man, I would say that's right in my heart, but if I'm a weeb, I don't have one. Oh, are you Monokuma? What the fuck? Oh wow! Are you like? Did you do this just for this, or did you have? Are you always Monokuma? I can't believe this shit. Are there a bunch of people that are just following me around, so I'll comment on their on their skins? Oh, it's Sans. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you again, Renjay, for the for the message. Ralph Clogs says we subscribe for twenty two months. I'm impressed with your your skin, Ralph Clogs. Uh, I was going to stay, but so many people squared me off. Oh. <laughs> and also, hundred percent, Ralph Clogs. I'm glad people kept making the 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 glass no balls. <sighs> like, did Top Lolly make this by himself? By the way, speaking of the glass, breaking case of Q and A for Joe Top Lolly. Damn, how how thoughtful of a 
of top lolly. Mm -hmm. Truly the toppest of lollies, don't you think? I think so. Yeah. Thank you, Ralph Logs. Uh, 22 months in um, mm, Pun Master Patrol. Oh, that's good. Pun Master Patrol. Uh, thank you, Twisted Tootsie, for the 17 month resub. And I think I'm almost at the end if anyone is waiting for us to get back to the question. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you, Twisted Tootsie, for the 17 month resub. 17 months in, in uh, when we said, Rubdo Sub Club. Thank you very much. Action Kater used 100 to say, My computer said, You need to leave this, the server now and close the game as I was staring at a person. Uh, going around in circles on a minecart and I can't join again. I'll be back next time. Wait a minute. I just joined again somehow. I'm scared. I think I just saw you in chat in the game, Action Kidder, but this was a while ago because we were answering the question so much. But um, yeah, it's a bit laggy. I think I need to upgrade it and I might also need to turn the amount of people down. I think maybe 50 is too much. Uh, let me see if there's anyone who's messaged me on Discord about, about certain settings or whatever. Just a few. Just a few. That's a cute cat. Okay, how do I mod people? Do I just do I just slash mod? Mod? No. Promote? No. How to mod people in Minecraft? I already know I'm OP. You guys don't need to tell me that. Uh, okay, so uh, what is what is? Can you tell me your names in in the game, Lucid? If you're still here, I think I could be Minecraft mod. Maybe you could tell me your name. Uh, uh, what it is, Shivra? Lucid Dragon, or was? Lucid Memer, okay. So OP Lucid Memer. OP Lucid Memer. Okay. That player does not exist. What? Lucid Memer. Okay. Alright, there we go. Alright, OP Shiv Shav. Shav VA. V A not nah, not here. I'm not sure right now, but it should work anyway. My name is San Shivra. Okay. I spelled Mima wrong. Okay, that's probably why then. San Shiv. V A B R A. S A N S. Yeah. S. Okay, you're not here for some reason. Maybe if maybe it's because it's you're not showing up because you're not on the server, but you said it'll still work anyway. Yeah, it worked. Okay, so here we go. All right, who else? Uh, Ashen Caterer. Ashen Caterer. Should be using the other computer for this, actually. I'm an idiot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I don't. I don't want to read like uh, premises out loud. And last one is. Waskies, not Woskies. Is it? It's not what it's not well, it's what it's waskies. Yeah, we found out oh, good to know. after so long. All right, so if anyone else would like to be, oh, I'm, I'm dead. If anyone else would like to be an, an operator on <laughs> the door would open, but no, you guys thought of that too. <laughs> Oh uh, shit! Uh, if you would like to be a Minecraft uh, mod, and I and and I like the criteria is that you have some experience with it, and um, that you are an, oh sorry, I hit you, Monokuma. That I I will recognize your name. Like if I if you are someone that's you you actually named it Diamond Sword Chan. Oh my god. 
Oh my god. You actually named it Diamond Sword Chan? Yeah, just DM me on uh, on Discord and I'll, and I'll uh, mod you and we'll go from there. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm thinking of getting Resident Evil 2 Remake for sale. Is it worth it? If you love those kinds of games, yeah, it's 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 worth it. All right, we need to we need to throw the diamond sword chain into a into a volcano. Are there any volcanoes in this game? Will it die if we throw it into a volcano? Or are diamonds immune to volcanoes? Oh man! All right, maybe one day we'll 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 get back to the questions, Lily. Welcome to the Q and A. We do occasionally answer questions. Uh, Dominus LT has resubscribed for twenty one months. Minecraft server Pog. Yep, Pog Pog Pog. Pog it up. Maybe it's too much for for the for the Q and A's. Maybe it, it, these need to be their own special event servers for trying Minecraft and everything. Maybe we'll but, see. It's the first but, night. In my but people have been asking for this for for like over a year, so uh, it's okay. Just I, I feel bad about the questions. That's all. Oh no, rumbled. Um, thank you, Dominus LT. I hope hope you are enjoying the the Minecraft server if you managed to get in. I think there's been quite a few people that have cycled in and out uh, throughout the night. So I think anyone who wanted to get in tonight has managed to get in. Um, but the lag might have made it not that great. I think I'll probably if, if there's still like capped people tomorrow or after the stream's done tonight, then I will I will upgrade it sooner rather than later. Thank you, Dominus. Uh, Valkyr has resubscribed for four months. Oh hey, I guess I'll join. Thanks for excellent insight and analysis. Or analyses, Joe. You're welcome, Valkyr. I'm glad that you you think that, and I'm glad that you get something out of them. Um, not doing all that well tonight, but thank you, Valkyr. Four months in, whatever we said in a while. Don't break my computer with I your will water. I'll spill my water. <laughs> um. Hmm. The winter wyverns. I haven't said that in a while. Yeah, it's been a while for that one. Uh, a dying plant, please water me. Has resubscribed for five months. Don't destroy the yakuza sign. <laughs> Tenko was a bad character. Oh damn. All these memes on signposts. I love it. Take a sand, leave a sand. Alright, let's take a sand. I'm taking a sand. Alright, I took a sand, but I'm not I'm not leaving one. I'm not leaving one. I'm not obeying the rules. Uh, thank you, Dying Plant. Please water me. Thank you very much. Snuggles has resubscribed for 26 months with a tier 3 sub. If we had it, you would have a, an Ayaya right now, Snuggles. What do you think of that? Wish I could catch more streams. Mish. <laughs> <laughs> the chat's going nuts. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Snuggles. That's, as always, very, very generous to you for the tier 3 sub. Uh, maybe I will add a, a, a special sub at some point, I, or an emote thing at some point, but I just, I don't, I don't want it to be, um, too, uh, too much of a lure, you know? Too much of a lure, but th thank you very much, Snuggles. Thank you, thank you. I hope you're well. 26 months. God damn, that's so many months. I say space man use hundred business. Hey, hi Joe and Lily. Uh, do you have some? Do you have? S sorry, do you have some? Have all right. That's why I'm I'm missing it. Uh, do you have some piece of advice or some encouraging words for me? I ended a ten year relationship somewhere recently, and it's been really hard. Wow, that's a long relationship. It really is. I'm sorry to hear that. I said space man, who may or may not be high me. I really hope it is now because otherwise, I'm. I'm got someone completely confused again. I don't I don't even know what to say. Like a ten year relationship is 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 more more taxing than most divorces, isn't it? Well you look at how many people you know are together, get married if they get married, have kids, you know, and a lot of the times it's only a handful of years, right? Or, or even less. So ten years is is a long is a long commitment. Luckily for me, I I have never had to deal with that, so I don't know that I have any any advice beyond that. I hope it gets easier for you and just take it one day at a time. It is Jaime, yeah. It is, is it? Jaime, yeah. I'm sorry to have this really serious question while the big penis statue is burning. The the dick is on fire. Um, I don't. Yeah, I I don't like. I think the the most common thing people say in these kind of situations is you know just with breakups is there's plenty of fish in the sea you know like you, you know it's take awful. your time and i think it's terrible yeah I, I don't think it's 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 
I feel like that's just basically a really polite way of saying just get over it. But I think people don't don't really know what to say, so they just try and say something that, that they think is going to make make themselves feel better. Um, I think it's the death of a relationship, and it should be kind of mourned mm -hmm. as such. You know, you should take your time and get your head around it, and look after yourself, and do what you need to do for you right now, and. If there's plenty of fish in the sea, they'll still be there when you're ready for them. You know, like, don't rush. Take your time. Kind of make your peace with it as much as you can. Yeah, I'm sorry, though. That's, that's really awful. I'm really sorry. I think things need times that... If it's something that you can't control and you can't make better by consciously thinking about it and consciously acknowledging it then my usual advice and what i try to do myself is just to try to distract yourself and and try not to think about it as much as as much as you can you know like go into go into hobbies go into things that you love go into things that will keep your mind off of it and don't like shy away from thinking about it and and you know don't hide from it but at the same time like if if actively um Actively being aware of it, it worse yeah too, or right? or isn't, isn't even making it better than than just try to do something else instead i think that's that's it like or i mean like nothing is going to be positive about it but is there something that you couldn't do because you were in that relationship and it's like okay well you know it's not like hey celebration now i can do this but like you have the opportunity now to to do something like that so like anything at all you know even if it's a small thing just just try it. That's what I think. I'm sorry about that, Jaime. Can you hear the kids? Very much. Can they hear the kids? I Can you know. guys hear the kids? <laughs> you guys can't hear the kids? They're 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 pretty bad. Um, guys, it might sound fake, but it really helped a lot. I hope it does Jaime. Do you want me to turn fire spread off? Someone said that in chat. I don't know how to do that. I'm gonna have to reset the server to do that. The whole thing is is uh is uh burning down. How do I turn fire off? Fire. It's a command you can input. Enter the command game rule do fire tick false. We'll prevent fire from spreading. All right, so I think it's like lagging the server, isn't it? I'm gonna go because they're gonna wake up Kate. Okay. There you go. Now it's not spreading. sad that the, t that the penis statue the tower got chlamydia what is this huh how did how did the big cylinder get wasn't touched hmm hmm is there like their own like group of people that worship that one and killed the false idol hmm I'm not sure about this I think that's something something just went on there. Uh, thank you, Nate Yuck or Nady Uck for the new set of Prime. Welcome to Prime Time. Welcome to the pickle jar. Thank you very much. Hopefully, uh, the people are still here from from saying thank you. Uh, we got behind on it, so hopefully. Uh, thank you, Action Cater, for 100 bits. I'm on the penis right now, doing nothing. As a mod, shall I fly around as spectator and see what people are doing? <laughs> I don't know if you can do that as a mod. I have no idea what your what your powers are. I would say just continue playing the game as normal, and if. Uh, if anyone is is like acting up in chat or whatever, then then um, oh, it's Mithra. Just just wow. All right, cool. Um, then just uh, kick them, you know. But so far, I think everyone's been well behaved. Is the sub only? No, anyone can join, but the server's probably full. Someone can post the IP in chat if you'd like. I think it might still. No, it's not. It's not still my uh, 
My copy paste thing. Hold on. It's time for our nightly fincher eruption. Interruption, yeah? yeah. Oh, people are posting in chat right now. Okay. Yeah, this is a pretty much a disaster for the questions, Lily. But that's okay. Maybe we should do another one tomorrow night just for questions and not have Minecraft on. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe. Maybe. Um, thank you, Already behind a week. Nico Fast, for the two month resub. Ever heard of Hollow Knight? <laughs> I love Hollow Knight, man. I'm hoping Silk Song lives up to type at least a little bit. Uh, thank you, Nico Fast, for two month resub. Thank you very much. Two months in the Dragon's Den. Action Carry use another 100 bits to say. No, I already said thank you. I read this one. What? Oh, did it jump ahead? I'm sorry. Did I skip over your 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 resub, Nico Fast? You can't even tell because you can't see my list. So why am I acknowledging it? Let's just keep going. Thank you from Octopus for the 13 month resub. Unlucky for some. Glad to see this server is as much of a shit show as I imagined. Happy holidays. It's like, it's like the Discord server in a fantasy realm, huh? Like, look, so there's just a dick on the beach. Look at this. There's just, it's just a dick. Here's a dick. There's the other dick is burning. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck that's turning into. Just, yeah. Just, just beautiful. Just beautiful. This is this is the, the Discord made real. Yeah, thank you, Vlog. Uh, <laughs> the Mark Eleven uh, has used hundred bits to say, "Have you considered playing Fire Emblem Three Hooses? Lots of Persona Five elements. I'd love to watch you critique the story and gameplay and waifus. Pogchamp, great meme stream game. Yeah, I think we'll play that at some point. Probably. I don't think we'll have time next year, but maybe in twenty twenty one we'll play Three Houses because we're gonna play Persona Three Four and Five Royal in twenty twenty along with all the other stuff that we're gonna stream. So uh, if we get through that faster than than I think, then maybe we'll play it in in twenty twenty. I'd be interested in trying that out." Uh, you're not the first person that said that to me, and that makes me makes me interested. So we'll see. Uh, and last but not least on my list is Discord for the ten month resub. Completely unrelated, but I don't want to keep forgetting about this. It was really weird for me to, for, sorry, the first time I found out your wife's name is Lily because I have a younger brother named Joe and a younger half sister named Lily. Oh man. Small world. Yeah, that's that's weird. Yeah. You must have thought, thought of bringing that up quite a bit, actually. Ten, ten months later, uh, Discord. Thank you very much for for saying that, and thank you for the for the resub. Ten months in uh, in whatever Lily wants to say. I'm gonna go see Finn. Sorry about that. Ten months in the Lily Lair. Everybody, how's it going? Thank you for the lilies. Beautiful as always. Hey, hey. Yes, lavender lilies, the lilies only. Lily, we won't blame you if you take over the channel. Come on, guys. Who says I haven't already? How goes it? It goes. It's been a long day for me. I'm happy that I was awake and still somewhat coherent as I am, so I apologize if that changes soon. Lily, when will you stream Dark Souls? Hmm... Well, I would have to play Dark Souls in order to stream Dark Souls, and I don't know if I'm ready to play Dark Souls. But maybe if I had a drink or, or four or five, I'd be comfortable enough on stream to play Dark Souls, so maybe that's what will have to happen. The yeah, overnight sick, yeah. It's my own fault. I had an appointment this morning. And I made it early because I thought it would be better with the kids, but then I was up with Kate till like four, so. You know, nice in theory, right? And then with the Q&A and everything. Who's this? Sorry, I'm new to the stream. It's Lily. I'm Joe's wife. Welcome. It's 
So how are you? You okay? We didn't see each other last week. They're killing jeweled sprays. I don't know how, and I'm scared to touch anything, so... Yeah, all space bar. Well, I'm holding it and I don't know if anything's happening. Oh, that's nice. You saved, that's nice. Thanks guys. Can I let go of space bar now? Is it even doing anything? Favorite book is Gone Girl. You almost died, but they saved you. That's good. Oh, I really am almost dead. I, I tried to press spacebar, but I don't know if that even... Oh, I see QA wants to kill me again. <gasps> it's the second time. I see QA is obviously a, a Mario Odyssey fan. Was I in here? Mm. <laughs> I don't know. It got really dark. <laughs> My penis is still burning. I can't climb out of here? No? Really? Oh, it's like one deeper. Oh, okay. I don't know why. Hmm. That was weird. What are you? Huh. Hey, Charlie man. Charles the Mang. I read Gone Girl after hearing you guys mention it so much. Very glad I did. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm rereading it actually right now. I think for the third time and I'm still still loving it, so. Oh Flexen is here. Or it's his imposter Flex M. <laughs> and he's he's a mic he's a Microsoft Sam too. Favorite comedy series, Joe? The thing that's made me laugh the most of, of a series is Ricky Gervais and Carl Pilkington on XFM, their their radio show, which may or may not have been scripted. It's it's hard to tell. Um, I used to think there was no way in hell it was scripted, but as I've gotten, as more time has passed, I, I wonder. I wonder more. Uh, the show that has made me laugh the hardest is probably Arrested Development. But I haven't seen the new stuff. But Arrested Development was really, really good and funny. Uh, for like a whole, like enjoying like a whole series, I really enjoyed How I Met Your Mother, but it didn't end all that well. So I don't know if that is, is a good one anymore. Um, I think that's it. There have been, there have been other sitcoms I enjoyed. I like Friends when I was growing up. I, um, like The Good Place is probably my favorite show right now that's a comedy. Class Trial by Boat Star, aka Monokuma. Someone in chat saying Rick and Morty. Yeah, Rick and Morty's really good. I'll still say that. Like, I don't I don't care that everyone's decided to have a huge hate boner for it. Like, I, I never, like, like I never loved it as much as most people did. So I'm not going to hate it as much as people have turned on it now. But yeah, that's pretty good. How about your mother's bad than friends? I think so too, yeah. Thank you, Ben, Benner... Benarino, Benarino, there we go, for the eight month resub with PogChamp. Are you in the server, Benarino? If someone can link the information again, we'll see if we can, uh, if we can see uh, if anyone else can get in at the moment. Um, I'm gonna say though, I'm a bit disappointed with the performance. You know, like it's like I don't know. Uh, I thought that we would have more stability you know like the, the the server wasn't like crazy expensive but it wasn't cheap either considering like it was it was like the it was like a um 
what is it when your first month is like half price? Like a, it was like a promotional rate. So for the full price, it's kind of like, okay, I, I was expecting more performance out of this than for, for what it should be at the full price. So uh, I don't know. Maybe I just have too high expectations for, for, for Minecraft. Maybe it's going to lag no matter what. Or maybe there's some settings I need to tweak. I'm not sure. Or maybe it's probably my fault. Maybe there's something I didn't set up properly about it. Some some server setting. Not even about the in-game settings. Hmm. Anyway, thank you very much, Benarino. Uh, eight months in the Dragon's Den. And Ralph calls you some bits to say. Stream titles could be Great Balls of Fire, Hunk of Burning Love, and My Sex is on <laughs> Oh, oh seven for for the for the tower penis that burned halfway down. Oh seven, oh seven. All right, let's get to questions. Should we go to uh, keep on Patreon or should we go to, to 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 Discord? What do you think? I think if we keep on with Patreon, we might you know do at least another page. So let's just go with Patreon. Go ahead. Banjo G. It's a Q and A. Remember. <laughs> What's that? Hey, Banjo G. Good day, Joe and Lily. Hope you and the kids are well. Glad to see the Q&As are back. They're always a great listen. Except maybe for tonight. Except for maybe tonight, yeah. Couple of quickies comparatively this month. If you could remove one aspect of typical modern game HUDs. HUDs. Heads up HUDs, display. Yeah. And have it be conveyed. So see see this thing here, the hearts on the bottom, and like the food here, mm -hmm. and the little, th that sort of thing. Oh. That's the heads up display. That's the HUD. And have it be conveyed using the game world mechanics. What would you choose? Example, Breath of the Wild allows you to turn off the mini map and follow actual NPC directions. Whereas Witcher 3's NPC directions are nonsensical. Uh, I th th that one, unfortunately, like that, that would be the the one that I would change. Like it, it drives me crazy in a lot of these games where you are just given, um, you're given quests to go places and they don't even tell you where to go because it just makes it so much easier for them to design every area after that if they just give you quest markers instead. Um, there's a there's a certain monster hunter game that does that that is uh, quite annoying uh, because it just takes away a lot of the, the it makes you appreciate the world building a lot less and a lot of work went into that. So yeah, um, I, I, I think that one. Um, but in general, I think that almost, if you can get anything off of the HUD, I think it, it's a positive if you can get it off the HUD without losing anything. So what Dead Space did with health, you know? It doesn't have to happen for me, but I, I think that um, it's a it's a positive it again like the, the 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 particular thing the specific thing that has to happen there is that you're not losing anything you know like as long as you're not losing any clarity for it doing that doing that way i think that it's it's a positive because you have less things cluttered on the screen but if you can't then you know it's fine like games are going to have huds they're going to have information that need to be given to you uh, i will say that not every game needs to drop the mini map i think that um I think that some of some of them need them, especially if you ever find yourself opening the map constantly to see things, and that is a a bad, uh, like a bad situation. You need to fix that. So I don't know what the, what the case would be, because like in Witcher Three with with the detective vision, I'm not really a big fan of that either. But that does take some things like like a, a lot of the strain off the mini map. Um, but you can't really play that game without the mini map on. I I did like my first ever playthrough of that was with the mini map off, and there you go. There, I add it to the wiki, and uh, I didn't gain much out of doing it that way. Um, not at all, really. But yeah, the game is not built for that. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else with what I could take away. There's not really much else that's on the, on the HUD, right? No, I think that's it. My God, we had a concise answer to a complicated question. We did it. That's it? Yeah, we did it. You're that's done? it. I'm done. Yeah. Were you asleep? Oh, you look I'm cool. not. I'm not going to lie. I kind of blanked out for a minute because I was <laughs> expecting you to go for a while. And now I, I don't really know what happened. I know. Good for you. The it was the are, first time for everything. What the fuck are they doing over there? <laughs> first time for We've peaked. This is it. 
You've mentioned on stream before that you don't have a very high opinion of yourself. Does that cause you to be shy, socially awkward? And if so, is there anything you do to combat it? Um, yeah, I, it depends on what you mean. Uh, I don't think I'm particularly all that intelligent. I think I'm, I'm about average, uh, maybe a little above average, but I think most people think that about themselves. So that isn't, isn't really news. Um, I don't think I really, I don't think I would hate, I, I would go as far as say I hate myself. Otherwise, you know, with, with like, sort of like, uh, like a joke. I'm trying to move past kind of jokes like that. Cause I don't think it's funny. Like, I, I, I think that the whole, like a lot of what our generation is doing, the millennials, I'm still a millennial. You can't call me a boomer. Don't take it away from me. Is, is that, uh, the whole, like, ha 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 I'm so suicidal or oh I'm if if I had a deal with the devil and he said that you know he would give me a million dollars but then he would have to kill me two days later I would say oh why don't you just kill me now <laughs> that would be so great like I feel like that kind of has become damaging and I don't think that it's a good thing and I think we should move away from that and we should all just fucking stop because some people have real problems and I think it's really insensitive to them and I think it's not really all that great. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Is it, is it some people who are actually suicidal and people who actually do have those kind of suicidal thoughts? I don't know. Like, do they, do they get any solace out of other people saying that? Is it like, oh, it's being normalized a bit and I don't feel all that bad about having those thoughts or does it, it does it encourage them? I don't know. I don't know enough about it. It just, it just kind of rubs me the wrong way and I don't like it anymore. But yeah, I don't hate myself. I, I, I think I said on once on, um, on stream, you know, like I fucking hate myself, but that was just like me doing a really bad joke. I shouldn't say it. No, I don't hate myself. I do think of things I've done in the past and, um, and want to, to die, but not in a, I want to kill myself way in a, I, I'm so embarrassed that that happened to me. Like I, I, I want, I want to die. Like I, I once, I once accidentally propositioned a teacher for a blow job in high school. And I like, I, I think of that sometimes late into the night and I just cringe so hard that my legs hurt, you know, like, it's like, Oh my God, I can't believe that happened. You know, it was, you know, like, so it's things, things like that. Um, so I think I told that story once before on stream, actually, so I don't need to elaborate. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, so this, there, there's things like that. Uh, when I was in high school, I was, uh, I had a lot of acne. So, uh, in terms of, in terms of like how I physically look, uh, I'm not really that happy with how, how I, I physically look. Um, I do have kind of a, a weird charisma. Like I always had like a girlfriend, you know, like, and I never really had trouble with that, despite what I think looking way below average when I was a teenager. Um, and most of you have probably seen me and know that I'm not like the most handsome person, but, uh, I kind of took pains to look different than I usually do in when I went on the podcast and I did the hat and time stream. Like, um, I look very different from that right now. So like that was kind of intentional and, but yeah, I, I'm not the best looking person in the world, but like that doesn't really bother me anymore. You know, like it's it, it used to, but no, I don't think so. I, I don't know. I feel like I have like, um, just, just a lack of confidence in some areas. And in other ways I, I'm, I have enough confidence, you know, like I feel confident enough in my abilities that I, I feel like I could pretty much learn anything that I wanted to, and I could uh, like most things if I just put my mind to it and I actually gave it a proper try. So I don't like conf confidence in that way. I don't have a very good conf uh, confidence in public speaking, even though I'm doing that right now. But like I've said many times before, I can just kind of pretend that you guys, uh, aren't really here and I'm just talking into a room it's it's a lot easier to just kind of separate yourself from from public speaking when you're not seeing the people in front of you whereas if I had to like speak in front of a crowd I would be quite quite nervous but like if I'm being really honest with myself I think I could still do it so like it, I don't lack confidence in that way but like I don't know like I, maybe it's more of imposter syndrome like I, I really feel sometimes like like I'm gonna get a message one day and it's just gonna be like yeah, your, your whole thing that you got going on right now is, is complete fake and it's complete bullshit. And, uh, you know, everyone has been lying to you about your success and, and now the real world starts and, and, you know, you're done, you know what I mean? You're done. Like that sort of thing. So, um, I think that's, that's, that's the big one for me. Um, I don't know, like, huh? I 
I just kind of stopped talking there, huh? After 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 rambling all 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 that way. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't really think about it. Like I, maybe I should. Maybe I should. I think more about. It. I just kind of kind of assume that I'm still the same kind of person that I was a, a long time ago, and I guess I'm not anymore. Um, I also like don't. I don't know. Okay, this will this will be where I end because because I don't want to go on on about it too much. And we've spoken about our parents a little too much uh, on the stream before. But like, I I don't have parents anymore. You know, like my mom's been dead for a while. And before she was before she died, uh, we weren't speaking for a while before that. And we had only just started speaking again uh, a little bit because she found out that she had a brain aneurysm. Um, and before that, I hadn't spoken to my dad in, in, in a long time. And like when my mom died, that, that that like there was no reconnection, like nothing, nothing happened. I didn't speak to my dad even after my mom died. So like, I don't have, I don't have parents. So like for, for since I was like, what? I, I'm gonna say effectively 19. Like I've, I've been like an orphan. You know what I mean? Like even before my mom died, my mom was pretty much dead. So, and she died really fast. So it's like, I don't have any any like I I go and I go and do something and like I I I achieve this and time to call my mom you know what I mean or time to call my dad and see what they say you know like I, I don't I don't have that kind of like return home touch to base kind of thing when any everything anything happens to me when I'm an adult so I wonder if if that lack of context has make me made me sort of um, emotionally stunted in some ways when it comes to acknowledging like progression you know what i mean like I, I i don't ever ever get back to that point where i feel like i'm a kid again talking to my parents you know what i mean like i that's just part of my life that's just gone forever so like i don't know how how much of that is important to like an adult becoming more of an adult or emotional kind of um maturity i have no idea you know what i mean like I, I i don't know so like maybe maybe that's where it comes from maybe i don't i don't get to i don't have much introspection when it comes to that kind of thing because i just don't have that opportunity but mm, i don't know it doesn't bother me though like i don't i don't think i'm really missing anything but like how would i know right so but yeah but that's all i'll say about that it's nice that i don't have to explain to to my parents what fucking weeb is and <laughs> what really goes on here <laughs> joe is oh i wonder what this is gonna be it's probably gonna be joe is a nice guy right it's not gonna be anything else joe joe is a nice guy all right i'm sad and don't be sad it's fine this is why we have our own family yeah this is why we want to have a, a big family because quick, let's end the stream and let's go have sex and make another baby oh okay quick 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 no, I don't want to. I'm a weeb. Oh, there's the A. Joe is a... Why would you have another baby? Oh, well, he was feeling a little down that night, so... <laughs> That's a good reason, right? Just wanted to cheer him up. Is that another Monokuma? How many Monokumas do we have? Oh, it's a W. What's going on in the, back there? Over there. What are they building? Hmm. Anyway, so yeah, that's that's all I know. I don't I don't really I can't comment on it much. Sorry. Like, I feel like I'm a, I'm a pretty well adjusted sort of person for uh, where I am in in my life. I, I do have my own issues and my own neuroses and my own hangups and everything. Obviously, everyone does, but uh, I think I do okay. And there was a there was a time I be I believe like maybe over a year ago where I almost quit streaming and I even wanted to shut down the channel because the the very very whoa we're going really fast just e even the the very slight and i do want to me to emphasize slight because i don't think i'm famous at all the very slight amount of e-fame that i that i had was getting to the point where it was becoming um harmful you know like i i was i was starting to have not very good thoughts about it and i was starting to uh, obsess about a lot of things and I was starting to uh, take things a little too personally and I, like I, I didn't want to be that person and it wasn't very healthy and uh, I don't know I don't think I made any like big like conscious moves to 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 to, to get away from that I think I just kind of stopped 
caring so much about it, you know? And I'm a little, I'm a little looser now than I was before. And more of just like, you know, just, just let things go. You know, it's like, it's fine. You know what I mean? Like, and I think that's good. And, and, uh, I'm, I'm happy where I am right now with, with that. Um, and that's what, that was my attitude when I first started. And then it started to get to me quite a bit, especially around the Danganronpa kind of, kind of arc, that kind of time. Uh, that was, uh, that was pretty bad. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's going better now. Aw, oh, thank you for the sword. Bring I I want Sword Chan back. I want Diamond Sword Chan. Bring me the head of whoever currently has Diamond Sword. Chan. <laughs> Wait, is this Diamond Sword Chan? How did you how did you have Diamond Sword Chan? Have you just been wandering around following me with Diamond Sword Chan? Oh. What? Alright, I, I will knight you. Alright, consider yourself knighted. Mega Dewey. Consider yourself knighted. <laughs> did you did you kill the guy who killed me? Diamond Pickaxe Chan, Diamond Ho Chan, Diamond Leggings Chan. Oh my god, everything's Chan. Everything's Chan. Oh, thank you. Thank you for returning the Chans. Take a Chan, take a Chan, take, take a Chan, Chan. Oh man, was that the last question from Banjo G? Technically. Yep. Yeah. I recommend the Boss Fight Books catalog for some interesting game design reads. They don't all dive deep, but are often very informative. I especially recommend Spelunky, written by its creator, Derek Yu. Uh, can you link those to me on, on Discord so I have like a record of them and I can add them to my list? Um, I'm actually planning to do a video at some point in the future on game design books because I've read more than one now, and I think that would be interesting to, to go through, I'm going to say like 20 or 30 books, and actually, you know, have, have a video source and be like, hey, these are the ones that are actually worth it. Here are the ones that are kind of eh, and here are the ones that are just complete shit. Um, so I think I would, I think that would make an, an interesting video and I'm going to do the reading anyway, but yeah, I've heard of both of those. Uh, thank you to uh, Zorn. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Zorn, Zorn Howe, for the 500 bits. Have a nice Q&A stream, Joe. Going to go watch your Dangarampa playthrough now for the first time. Hope you enjoyed, Zorn Howe, though. Those were some pretty good streams. Uh, I don't know if they were our best streams. I don't know if it's if it's Undertale or, or Dangarampa or, or Persona or maybe even Death Stranding. I don't know what the, what the best streams that we've done are, but those are up there. I hope you enjoy them, Zorn Howe. If you enjoy my kind of humor, I think that you will have a, a good time with those. Uh, just be careful of the sprinklers. They go off all over the place. Uh, and thank you so much for the bits. Uh, Zorgrox used a bit to say, Joe, you may recognize me from... Uh, um, hmm, just want to be a mod. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you want to be a mod and I can recognize your name, then, then shoot me a message on discord and I'll get to you probably at the end of the stream for, for after, after we're done, but the rate we're going might have everyone be a mod. <laughs> we're all mods. Uh, pink asparagus is recently subscribed for five months as someone in therapy. I personally don't like the excess of suicide jokes and joking self-diagnosis. Uh, thought I think. No. Sorry. The, yeah, though I think all comedy is allowed, it's gotten too cultural and widespread. Yeah, well, we've discussed comedy before, and there's a difference between uh, comedy in in uh, in a uh, in a climate or an environment where comedy is expected, and then you know just saying shit amongst your friends and trying to get a laugh at, at the expense of anything. You know, I think that there's there's a difference there. Um, and oh my God, what's happening here? Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's it's good. Thank you for confirming that it, it does, you know, get to you. Like, I, I, I have a limited perspective for for that. Um, please donate potato. All right. Um, I had something else to say. Shit. Oh, self-diagnosis. Yeah, self-diagnosis drives me up the wall. And uh, I think there's some people that say it's, it's diagnosis privilege that, you know, you shouldn't uh, think less of anyone who who 
has self-diagnosed themselves with a mental illness because it's a privilege that not everyone can afford to go and get get properly diagnosed and sure that is true in some circumstances but there's also some reading that i do and it goes on to say that they can afford to go see a doctor it's just that the doctor won't diagnose them and they disagree with that and it's like okay well now you're just disagreeing with a medical degree you know what i mean like and doctors can make mistakes but at the same time like oh man like the 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 joking diagnosis gets me a little bit too you know like as as someone who is narcoleptic and has insomnia often you know like oh the the fucking tweets or the the facebook messages i see um like screen capped on on social media sometimes it's like oh i'm up until two in the morning lol i'm such an insomniac because like yeah you have no fucking idea you're just you're just you're just up late tonight because you found a new series on netflix that you want to watch you know like insomnia is not you're up late one night because you got enthralled with a new video game or something and Insomnia is when you want to sleep and you can't, you know, like it's, it's kind of annoying, but it's not like, it's not offensive, you know, it's just kind of like, it's kind of a dick move, you know what I mean? Don't, don't really, don't really in, enjoy, enjoy that. Um, thank I you for- I find it a little offensive, personally. What I find offensive, and we've spoken about this before, I'm not sure if we spoke about it on stream, but Lily and I have spoken about it, is, is this kind of like, Whenever, whenever there's someone who is aggressive in a way that makes the news, you know, like um, sometimes like it's it's a shooting, other times it's it's like Chris Brown, you know what I mean? Like, and it's like, oh well, they're mentally ill. It's like, like at this, I, I can understand where it's coming from. I, I think I think when you you go on to be a mass murderer, you have to have some sort of mental illness or something there. But some people are just fucking assholes, man. Like, why why do you have to label it all as mentally ill and and gets more beef going with with people who are who are mentally ill you know like who are actually mentally ill and aren't destructive you know what i mean like i feel like it's just kind of using it as this catch-all is kind of shitty and kind of just just it's bullshit it's bullshit but just because you're mentally ill doesn't mean you you get a pass to be an asshole mentally ill people are already maligned and and there's this huge stigma about them and, and that they're that they're dangerous and you shouldn't go near them and everything and it's like oh the, 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 yeah the and it other. fucks with your and... diagnosis too because then you think well i'm not dangerous so i must not be that bad mm -hmm. right i, I would i'm i'm not going to go and shoot up a place so I'm, i guess i'm not as bad as them so i don't really need treatment right i'm fine but you're not fine I find it offensive when people want to have what you have in a capacity and believe me, you can have it, you know, like, I don't want I, it. I do think some people think it's cool to have a mental illness. I don't, I don't want it. You're welcome to it, but I find it really a little bit in poor taste when I see things like that, where people, people seem to, to want that label and it's. Waste on Wonder says that. It. Uh, I feel the exact opposite of someone that's lived through a long lifelong depression and suicidal shit mixed with a healthy dose of insomnia. I love jokes about it. It's an outlet. You love making jokes about it or you love seeing jokes about it or, or both. I don't know. Some like, jokes can be funny. I, I think some jokes are, are healthy and, and that humor is, is, is a is a coping mechanism that should be encouraged in a lot of ways. But what, I, I don't know if, if like, do you, do you think it's fine for how, um, what's the word? I can't think of the word. Why, why, how widespread it is is a word I'm thinking of. How widespread it is on on social media about like oh like I I, I wish I could die like I don't know. Ubiquitous. That's it actually. Thank you. That was exactly the word. Both. I took about our friends. I know I've lived through some shit as well. I love suicidal memes like children's songs about tiny shoes ending with, with someone tying a noose or something. Well, that can be funny. That seems like d dark humor, but it's just like how... Eh, maybe I'm not explaining it well. Or maybe you just disagree. Like, I'm thinking specifically of how just how casual a lot of people on social media are about it. You know, like, haha, I want to die. Like having a, 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 a nursery rhyme switch into that at the end. That's at least creative and yeah, like brain like, power you know to make something of that instead of just i'm depressed again i want to die somebody out here give me attention please tell me not to mm -hmm. you know and then that just makes me kind of feel like i don't know whenever i've really really wanted to die i've never said shit you know like it's for me i i kind of tend to go inward i think a lot of people tend to go inward they're not as vocal 
So it's kind of like, do you mean it? Or do you just want me to tell you not to, you know? And if you want me to tell you not to, that's, I get that, but it's sometimes it's all the time, you know, like it's, it's like, it's a regular thing you see from people. And I don't know. I don't find it. I don't find it healthy and I don't find it helpful and I don't, I don't no. see anything good coming from it. It's, it's definitely not as, as cute as a nursery rhyme about a noose. Sorry, this is way more important. They rebuilt the penis tower. It's back. It's back. You don't know who's reading it either, who might be right on the line and you, by you saying that you might be pushing someone else. You might not really mean it, but they might. Yeah, uh, so we saw an says, oh, okay, I just heard from the humor angle. I just always think of the quote I read. I don't recall by who, but I guess it goes for something like, if we couldn't laugh, we'd all go crazy. Yeah, like, I'm not saying that humor is not a not coping mechanism. It just it just seems so ubiquitous with our generation. Just just the constant, just like, haha, it wouldn't it be great if I died? You know, like, it's it's not even a joke. It's just this whole, like, it's become this kind of, this this meme of, like, all millennials are, are, are suicidal, you know? And it's like, ha, 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 you know, like... Yeah. Not, I'm not, I'm not a big fan, but I'm also not a big fan of, of, of how, how difficult a lot of new parents say that having a kid is, and it is difficult. Don't get me wrong, but it's like, it's not every day's hell and torture. You know what I mean? Like it's, and, and we have, and we have three, you know? So I, I'm not really a big fan of that either. Um, like it, it's, it's bad and it's tough, but it's, it's not that bad, you know? Like it just seems like it, when you think it's like that widespread, then what it actually is then you kind of don't take it seriously, you know? Like what I just said about do they mean it or, or is it just ha 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 or not even ha ha ha, is it just kind of a comment, you know? Like like what you said about the parenting just now. Some people really do struggle with parenting and, mm -hmm. and there are different circumstances, right, that are someone might really be having a hard time, but because everyone complains about the same shit, then, you know, you don't, you don't they take might it think seriously. they might think it's normal and it's not you know like yeah that's true anyway let's um let's 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 move on because I don't think this is the best form for that especially with what's on the screen right now um thank you to chuffed for the six month resub chuffed about that same joke every single time thank you very much chuffed what should we say for six months for chuffed clawfist for chuffed a chuffed clawfist? A chuffed clawfist. Ashen Cater uses 100 bits to say, you can find me boating around. You can join me whenever you need a tour guide of the Dangan Seaver. Okay, if you can find me, uh, I will I will, I will, will jump on the on the boat and see. You guys are making some pretty big things, I gotta say. Like, like damn, I'm impressed that you guys are getting all this done with how, how uh, laggy the server is. Good job. Apparently I do use skin voice, but I always thought it was just my clawfish voice. <laughs> so I'm more talented than I know. You, you kind of do a skin voice, yeah. It's the second person that said that tonight. There's music. Uh, thank you, Zip Zap, the electric newt, <laughs> for the 413 sub. I like your name. Zip Zap, the electric newt. Very, very Pokemon. Oh, I got a cookie. Thank you for the cookie. Uh, four months in the Dragon Sand. Thank you very much, Zip Zap. Uh, Toast Engineer, you're supposed to say, I've tried to. What? An Eero myself. I've tried to an Hero myself. I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Am I missing a term here? A couple times I find impression jokes uh, overdone but not offensive. The funny ones are funny. Don't shoot me. I'm the real Dave. The real Dave will never pass up a chance to die. Blunt. Yeah, see, that's funny. A tumbler self-diagnosis and fetishism is bad and dangerous. Dangerous, though. Oh, that's slang for suicide. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I would go as far as to say what, what I was talking about earlier are... It's, it's offensive, but... I I don't like it, you know? Well, I guess I would the only time I find it offensive, offensive is when someone's kind of like, oh, I wish I had that, or, you know, if someone were to say to you, oh, your dreams, those dreams sound really creative, Joe, like, I wish I had narcolepsy, mm -hmm. you know? When you'd kind of be like, well, thanks. Are you, you just know? vomiting potatoes right now? That, that's what I mean when I say I'm offended. I'm not offended by the regular jokes, it's just when it's like a personal thing of you're kind of romanticizing something that I hate about myself, you know, it's kind of puts me off a little bit. 
Yeah, I have Asperger's, which is a mild form of autism. Whenever I hear someone make a joke about autism, I just think they aren't aware of what they're saying. I don't automatically think they're a mean person by default. What do you think of autism? Yeah, I don't, I rarely ever think that anyone is, is mean. Um, I, I think the best of people, even people that I've disagreed vehemently in, in the past with, uh, like, I, I don't think that they're trying to be, uh, cruel or in, in any way like that, um, uh, the, the further separation there is for, between you and the person, even even if they, it may seem like they're being really cruel and obnoxious, I think it's just coming from a place where they're just, they, they don't think that it's coming across that way. Uh, there are going to be exceptions, obviously, that's what I think. I don't really think anything about autism. Sorry, I haven't really, uh, I haven't had much uh, interaction with anyone who's autistic. Uh, I don't, I don't know much about it. So uh, I do think that it's, I, I don't like how, autistic is become the new retarded you know the word like it's 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 becoming like when i was a kid people used to say um retarded for for something that they disagreed with or that was stupid you know like and sometimes i i still use that word because that's how i was i was brought up and i try not to because i just i think it's a dead word now uh but i see autism that's autistic you're being really autistic right now that that sort of thing it's becoming that that the, the replacement for that and i don't really i don't really approve of that but at the same time it's like i, I wouldn't go as far as to say it, it's it's offensive or anything it's just kind of it's just kind of shitty you know what i mean um, but that's, I don't really know much about autism. Ralph Lawless used to miss to say, Lily, Joe, make sweet, hot, sexy love to me. Joe, nah, I'm not in the mood because chat set fire to my giant EP. <laughs> uh, and thank you, O. Williamson, for uh, the new sub of Prime. A new sub for this. Welcome to Prime Time. Welcome, A. Williamson. Hope you're having a good night. Joe, I'm diagnosed with autism and I can't agree with you more. I'm so goddamn tired of people saying that things are autistic regardless of how closely aligned those things are to draws of various people with autism. I'm sorry you have to have to put up with that. Yeah. The the only the only thing I can say is that I I, I don't think people mean it in, in the meanest way that it could be interpreted. Some of them, obviously, there's going to be some assholes, but yeah. Um, can you see the next questions on Patreon? Yes. Okay. And that's the whole thing, right? Okay, I don't yes, need any. Yes, we're good. Okay. Joseph N. says, Hi, Joe. I have a long commute, and so I listen to many podcasts and audiobooks. I bought a new audiobook that I was excited to listen to, but before I could, I told myself that I needed to finish the book I already started. I ended up hating this book, but forced myself to listen for 10 hours. Then I realized I was done with the shit and finally listened to the book I wanted to hear. I do the same with video games. I'll buy one, and when I'm not enjoying it, I force myself to play. The Witcher 3 is actually one of those games I force myself to travel to every question mark because everyone Ooh. online... That's not good. You don't want to do that. You don't want to play that game like Every, that. I thought I said something wrong. No. Everyone you... online said the game was a masterpiece, but I was bored out of my mind. I find today that I only find enjoyment in multiplayer games like Dota, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, and World of Warcraft. But I feel some sort of fear of missing out or guilt when just playing games I want to play. So my question for both Joe and Lily, do you both struggle with the same thing, for forcing yourself to finish something that you are doing for fun? Uh, um... I think you might dislike Witcher 3 more than I do. <laughs> but uh, the, the the two Joes are, are, are in uh, significant alignment there about that. Yeah, that's a, that's a bad way to play. Um, I don't I don't really consume much media anymore for fun. Uh, I don't really have time at the moment. That's going to change. Like I, I said it a, a few times now. Um, no matter what, like I've said, it, said it in the past, but this time I really, really mean it. Like after the Witcher video is done, like the absolute most I'm, I'm working during, during like end of project times is, is like 60 hours a week. I'm, I'm not doing, um, hundred hour weeks again, like I am now for, to get this fucking done. And like I did in the past for like God of War and, and Odyssey and, and Breath of the Wild and stuff. I'm not doing it. Um, so I'm going to have more time to, to, to enjoy media that I've missed out on, but, uh, I, th I'm going to, 
say that most of my most of that free time I'm going to get back is probably going to be spent with with the kids, um, and that's going to be a whole different kind of kind of thing. But I, I'm hoping I'm going to have some more time to read some more books, to 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 watch some more TV, some more movies, and play some more games for fun. But because usually I just play games for for work, you know what I mean? Like that's that's it. Um, I can answer still though from what I used to how I used to play games especially uh was that I felt like I have to finish them to get my money's worth because you know that was a big factor you know here's here's this game and I should ring out the content because I because I want to to see all that it can offer but also because it was I I, I paid full price for it and you know like I I want to I want to uh I don't I don't want to feel like I got a bad deal there you know what I mean so I think so yeah um I think I'm more likely to stop reading books if I'm not into them but even then that's it's pretty rare Do, isn't what you're talking about got a got a term for it um FOMO fear of missing out you can clarify with it's like, oh, that, that new game is going to come out and I really want to play it. No FOMO. It's because you've always wanted to play it for a long time. Like it's, I feel that way sometimes, but not so much anymore. I kind of feel like I, I get fear of missing out on, on work projects. Actually, it's like, okay, well, I feel a fear of missing out on having a, a video on Death Stranding close to its release, that sort of thing, uh, which is just the unavoidable reality of that right now. Um, yeah, I... I, I feel that, I think. Um, but no, I don't really have that much experience with that at, at the moment. What about you? Like, a movie's pretty short, so I, I think I'm going to stick with a movie and finish it. TV series, yeah, I, I think I'm, I am I would give up on a TV series if I'm not enjoying it after after a while, uh, especially if it's if I think it might get cancelled. But no, you finish? Um, if I'm disliking it as much as you're saying you dislike it, I don't finish it. Yeah. Um, I try to read that blood sweat and pixels was it mm -hmm. yeah book? and yeah. i didn't finish it well it's not i started reading it yeah. because i thought you know it, it was there and i'm like with all the the channel and everything it might be a good idea for me to have some idea of you know certain things i read the stardew valley part because i know that game but i couldn't finish it and there's been maybe a handful of books over the years that I've gotten partway through and said, no, I just can't do this. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I get to a point where I'm not even following it. You know, I'm glazing over the paragraphs. I have to go back and reread over and over again. I pick it up and I don't remember where I left off because I'm not, I'm not paying attention because I'm so bored. So I don't force myself anymore to finish things. If I'm not hating it, but I'm not loving it, I'll stick with it as long as I can. There's a few TV shows that I've been watching for like months and months on Netflix that I don't know if I'll ever finish them. Maybe not, but it's not that I just, I hate them or anything. It's just, I'm not, I'm having trouble getting into them, you know, and I could kind of take it or leave it. And I kind of feel like you only have so many hours in a day, especially now with, with kids that, um, to kind of play with. So why would I waste my time on something that I'm really not enjoying when I could be enjoying something else? Mm -hmm. You know, you like you don't get unlimited time. Sign of getting older too, do you think? Maybe. You don't Maybe. get unlimited time. And when I was younger, I wasted a lot of time. And I look back now at that time and I'm like, what the hell did I do? You know, like all, all those, all these hours that fly by now, what was I using them for when I was like in my early and mid twenties? You know, like I, I don't even not anything that I have much to show for anyway, you know, like I, I could have done much more with it, but I didn't. And, um, for me, I have trouble with wanting to do too many things and then not, not being able to do them usually because I'm not motivated or disciplined enough to do them. So then I want to do everything. And then I try to put too many things on my list. And then that results in me doing nothing because I get overwhelmed or, I'm trying to read five books at the same time and I don't even know what's happening in any of them because I'm, I just, I always bite off more than I can chew basically. So I struggle with that, but I don't really struggle with exactly what, what you're saying, but in a way it kind of, I guess, results in something similar, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense. It makes sense. Someone in chat was saying about, about World of Warcraft giving them uh, extreme FOMO and like, yeah. 
um, anytime you're 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 in that kind of game, um, I think that you're you're gonna feel like, oh, am, am, am I really? Did I make a right choice here? I think I don't I don't know if people are like this anymore because I I'm I'm not myself so i don't get to interact with a lot of people that are, that are into into this kind of thing but um there was a time in my life where i just always had some sort of game that i was always playing in addition to other games that were coming out so it would be i'm, I'm playing world of warcraft and that's that's my that's my always game that i'm playing and then i will check out other games as they come out if i have time but that's the game i'm always playing and then for i think other people have like like destiny 2 is out now or, or league of legends or something like that is that true or a lot of people like that and anyone in chat that's like that there's there's a game that you're always playing and then you just kind of drift from breaks on that into other stuff maybe i don't know um path of exile is probably one of them for some people someone in chat just said that too yeah i i uh I think that can lead to, to, to fear of missing out. Um, I think that going for full completion is a bad idea in a lot of games. And I try not to do it anymore, even though I, I feel like I have a reputation of a completionist, even though I'm not. Uh, I just feel that way. I feel like I have to do a lot of completionist stuff um, for, for videos when it comes to analyzing them. But it's not really about my own enjoyment anymore at that point. It's just about... Um, it's just about analyzing them and getting and getting data and information for it uh, to, to make um, informed arguments. Uh, but yeah, like I'm I'm really not that kind of kind of player. But it is hard to to know when something is going to be good or bad content though. Like there's no sign that says hey this is the filler stuff this isn't. And I wonder if 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 it was more clear if people would do that. Um, I think Witcher three is kind of clear about it like what what is filler and what is not but um one of like i think three of the hottest takes that is in the video is that most of the side content in witcher 3 is kind of bad so uh, and, I, and i'm not talking about hey Sybil, i'm not talking about like the the smuggler caches and skellige i mean like like the quests like they're they're bad so like it's hard to tell what's what's the good stuff and what isn't in in that kind of game and that's supposed to be like a, a big masterpiece right so i um i don't know i do feel though if you have like you feel a sort of obligation to finish something but that's supposed to be for fun and I kind of get it with, I should want to do this or I should be doing this because it, it is fun. That if you put that kind of pressure on yourself, it just stops being fun. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you. I look at my list and I'm like, okay, well, this is the housework. This is to do with the kids. This is reading a book, you know, read a chapter, write a scene, watch an episode. And all of this stuff just kind of builds up and suddenly it's like it's just kind of too much, you know, and you're just like, well, I would rather, I'm too tired now. I'm too tired to have fun tonight. So I'll just do nothing, you know, because it just turns into work somehow. I'm, I'm too tired to have yeah, fun. That's, too the, tired that's to a have parent fun. thing. If I ever heard it. Yeah. I'm too tired to have fun. But it's because I make it work. You know, it's not like, Oh, I'm, I'm going to spontaneously watch this. So I'm going to, you know, what the hell I'm going to do this instead. You know, it's like, it's no, what do I have to do? I, I've made it a have to, or a should instead of a want to. You know, and that's kind of the same thing. I think that you're saying is that you're you're forcing yourself to do something that is that is fun, you know, and it shouldn't require that much effort if it's if it's really fun, you know. So if it's not fun anymore, you've you've kind of made it a chore. So what does that say about it? Uh, I think more than one person in chat just said something about like doesn't doesn't that bring my opinion down on it though if I'm going for full completionist or whatever or that I shouldn't care about about that when it comes to like discussions and stuff. Well, I I think that if I only did reviews, you'd be right. But I don't do like my videos aren't usually reviews or I try very hard to separate that. I don't think I've been as clear as I could have been in the past that, you know, like the example that keeps coming up is Odyssey is like uh, Odyssey getting all the moons and everything and fully getting everything in that game. wasn't for my own enjoyment. It was for, it was for the experiment. It was for the analysis. It's not about enjoyment at that point. It's not a review. It's, it's about, um, pulling this game apart and deconstructing it. And like my enjoyment is completely separate from that at that point. Um, like there's my, my first playthrough of Witcher three was 150 hours. Uh, and 
you know, all the rest of the time I spent on the game after that have, have nothing to do with that personal enjoyment. You know, it's, it's all about figuring out, okay, like what, are, what, how does this game work? How does it tick? What if I did this? What if I did that? Like it's, it's all about pulling the systems apart and, and figuring that out. It's not about my enjoyment anymore. So on, on the one hand, yeah, of course it's going to bring my opinion down on like when I, cause I am a, an, an emotional you know, creature. Like if, if I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, okay, well my, my memory of, of Witcher 3 is going to be forever marred by the fact that I spent 30 fucking minutes fighting a wyvern in, in, in the north of Velen that was fucking Red Skull because it was level 42 and I was only level fucking 10, you know, like, like, I, of course I'm going to have like a bad experience with that when I think back, but I'm not going to put that in, in a review and say, this is why the game is shit, you know, like it's got, it's got nothing to do with that. You know what I mean? It's, it's all about pulling the, the, the game apart and, and figuring out what makes it tick. Um, and th that's why they're not reviews, you know? So I, I, I'm interested uh, in games as, as a player, as someone who enjoys playing games. Um, but I'm also in, in, in interested in playing games as a, as a critic, as an analyst, maybe, I don't know, or hopefully a future game designer. Like, okay, how, how does this work together? How does the system work? Um, what could make it better? What are the flaws here? Um, are there any simple tweaks that they could that could could have been made that could make this better? That sort of thing. So uh, that's that's what I think a lot of people don't understand, or I shouldn't say a lot of people. Many people don't understand in the videos, uh, especially if the game is quite celebrated. That the, these kind of things aren't meant to be attacks on the game. It's like, hey, look, this this is something that's kind of wrong with it. You know, like um, which Witcher Three has has very bad combat, but in terms of of an open world RPG, it has some of maybe even the best combat that there is. Even though I can say those two things next to each other, it's just <laughs> as a, as a reviewer, it's kind of like, huh, what? And, but uh, when you look at it as as pulling games apart, I think that's where it makes sense. Um, but I like contradictory statements too, so maybe that's my my uh, a weakness of mine. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, also, 1000 used uh, to resubscribe for two months to say, what was your favorite pastime to do with friends in high school, college age, eating ass? Um, I don't know. Uh, in college, I didn't have any friends because I had just moved back to Canada and uh, my life was pretty much uh, trying to get a job to leave home because I had to uh, for reasons that we're not going to go into and spending time with Lily. Um, so eating ass. No, uh, I, in friends before that, it was like playing video games and going to the movies. That's, that's why I really like to do. I also really like going bowling. I don't know why that's a boomer thing, right? I really like going bowling, but Lily and I used to like going to the movies more than anything going on really long walks, right? Yeah. I miss that. The long walks. Well, we still do the long walks like, cause we have to, cause we don't drive. We do them sometimes, but we used to do them all the time. I remember we would like walk to go for dinner and then like take like an hour to get there and then mm -hmm. walk, you know, back. Okay, bowler. <laughs> uh, uh, in high school, uh, I played uh, chess competitively. So there's, there's another thing too. It's pretty good. That at chess. was before my time. Yeah. But mostly video games and 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 uh, I, I always liked walking. I always wanted a dog. I wanted a dog so bad when I was a teenager. I kept asking. I kept asking my parents, like, "I want a dog," and they're like, "No." And then they started like stringing me along. Like after we moved to, because we moved a lot. Like when I was uh, like before I was a teenager, like I had gone to something like ridiculous, like nine different schools, because we just kept fucking moving. My mom would just be like, "Okay, time to move. It's been six months. Time to move." And they just kept telling me, you know, like, "Oh man, well, well, when when we move, we'll get the dog." And then we get somewhere like, "Well, we just settled in, so let's let's wait until we settled in, and then we'll get a." dog okay it's been a couple months can we get it no we're gonna move again soon it's like fucking the, and and then as it got older they just told me for like flat out like oh yeah you're not you wouldn't have wanted a dog anyway so we just kept telling you that because we you know you wouldn't have looked after the dog and then it's like within a fucking couple months since when i moved out we got a fucking dog fuck you mom and dad fuck you mom and dad not bitter not bitter at all wanted a fucking dog wanted a fucking dog um <laughs> thank you just poked me in the side uh, uh, also emphatically 
wrote two with three, so two months in the dragon's end, and thank you for the message. And actually, carries on was to say, uh, thank you for taking the the J A S tour. Uh, the the fee will be two fifty plus fifty for introducing you to the tree. Oh, plus tip. Oh man. Have your people contact my people. Uh, action caterer. Hey, Peter Griffin, you're still here. Wow. I technically did get that mana dog. Because I saw her first. Mm -hmm, you did, yep. Yeah. You did. And I knew. As soon as I saw her, I knew. I was like, he's going to want this dog. Yeah. And she's an old lady now. Yeah, she's just a puppy. Yeah. Oh, there's a dog. There you go. There's another one. Can you pet the dog in this game? Oh, oh, shh. Oh, no! No, 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 come, come back out, come back out. All right, hold on, let's... Okay, no sword equipped. All oh, looks sad. No, who's hitting the dog? Right, there we go. The dog's fine. The dog's fine. All right, good. Close good. one. That was a close one. Whew, that was a close one. All right, what's the next question on Patreon? Pet cat is soft. <laughs> Not dog. Not dog. Cat. How has the process been making these Witcher videos enjoyable despite the stress? Is that the whole question? That's the first question. And on that note, I'm going to go pee because I have a feeling you're going to about to like no, I'll be, tell them, right? I'll I had fine. a lot of coffee in preparation for this, staying awake for this stream. I'll, I'll, so I'll, I'll be fine. I'll, uh, I'll be back, you guys. Have well, fun. What happens if I just dig down? Oh, you know what? Maybe that's a bad idea. Okay, let's let's make stairs all the way down instead. Ah, fuck it. Let's just go all the way down. Um, so I this may surprise you, but it's been it's been mostly positive. Um, oh. Okay, uh, it's been mostly positive. Uh, it's kind of uh, so I'm trying to formulate my thoughts as as I as I try and to, to as I walk around in, in Minecraft here. Um, I okay, so this is this is going to be the the biggest project that I ever do in my entire life. Uh, like hopefully at some point I get to make a game and I'm sure that's going to be a bigger project overall, you know, in terms of cumulative work hours and all and, and everything. But in terms of just like solo, just complete, just, just me, like just going to bat in, in some sort of, uh, am I going to die here? Uh, for this, uh, like, like just, just a, a project that's just all me, you know, like all my own, like this is the biggest project I'm ever going to do in my entire life. And there's something kind of bittersweet about that. You know, it's kind of like, okay, um, it, there's it, there's something satisfying about having such a huge huge project that is kind of like you know uh, I don't know if it, it, it if it's longer than the than the entirety extended version of the Lord of the Rings trilogy or not but uh, it's it's close to it. Um, it's on it's comparable to that to that level of a project there's something kind of kind of I'm proud of it you know what I mean I'm, I'm proud that I was able to like we're 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 toward the end now it's kind of like I, I'm proud that that's gonna be something that I made and I can look back and be like, okay, well I did it. You know, I got, I got through it and, and, and I made it and it was really, really tough, but you know, I, I got through it. Um, but at the same time, like that's, that's having done the project and that's here close to the end. 
Um, it's it's been kind it kind of it's kind of been hell you know like it's there's a there's a lot of things that are that that have gone wrong and there's been a lot of things that i that i thought were going to go a certain way and they didn't and and i i feel i feel very um i i i feel like there's 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 a lot of like impatience from people and i'm not sure if that's even true but i just i just kind of it just kind of feels that way to me like i feel like i feel like i'm constantly letting people down that the project is isn't is taking so long and it's not done yet you know what i mean like i i i feel that way and i and i'm not sure if it's right to but i i just do um but i don't think that's what you're asking i think that's more you're asking about like like how the project is coming about like on its own and and, and the more creative side of it rather than the expectation side of it and and um and, and the people's reactions, but I'm not sure. Like, so I'll, I'll try and answer a little bit, a little bit of both. Uh, it's been, it's been like, it's been like juggling. I've, I've, I've described making like creative processes as juggling quite a bit in the past. Uh, but it's, it's just, just the best way to describe something. It's like, it's like writing uh, a book. Uh, the way I do it is like juggling so many balls all at once and just trying to keep them all in your uh, on your head. It's mental juggling. There's just all these things that you have to weigh and consider constantly. Um, and the longer the the thing that you have to write, the more balls you have to keep in the air, and the more you have to juggle constantly over and over and over and over and over. And the longer the project takes, the more you have to keep that juggling going. Um, to go back to, to what we spoke about earlier with with uh, John Irving's work, he is a a strong. Um, strong advocate of uh, all works having to come across as they are they were written in one breath so whether it takes you uh like planning five years to plan something or it goes through edits over the over the course of over over a decade uh when it when it comes down to the final draft that final draft has to be written in, in like it has to come across as it was written in a very short period of time it has to sound like it was the same person that wrote it in the same part of their life throughout that whole entire uh that, that, that entire process and i really really agree with that um and part of that is just keeping it all in your head and and being able to like have, have it in your ram so to speak in that part of your brain and that that is the part that i've alluded to a couple times on stream now that's driving me crazy it's it's just there's there's too many there's too many things to think about there's too much in in my head to 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 carry on you know and i've hit complete capacity on that um like this is this isn't just a god of war video it's like it's it's three maybe even four god of war videos at the same time it's it's three games one of which is even larger than fallout 4 you know with the dlc included and like i haven't said this yet but like like i played thronebreaker too you know what i mean like it's like it's not the it's not those are not the only games that i speak about in in the video you know like um there's it's it's even more than that um like i I don't know what's going to be like when 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 it's when it's finally over and you know it's just hitting render or it's not going to feel real until it's on YouTube and people are watching it. I don't know, uh, but no, it's it hasn't all been bad. It, it's it's there's there's something kind of like I'm I'm there's something to be proud about. There's something that even if it if it turns out that it's not my best work, you know, if if it's as long as it's just acceptable, it's kind of like oh okay, you know, I was able to do this this huge massive massive project and you know it didn't come out as my best stuff, but it still it still came out and it was watchable. It was decent. You know what I mean? Like. It, it, it was something that was that was comprehensible after all that time and it wasn't just a complete it just wasn't a complete failure you know what i mean like that that would be enough for a project this big um so in that respect yeah it is enjoyable this despite the stress but is it worth it almost certainly not uh even even if it did like like exceptionally well like i'm talking like it gets if it went up in as as one video and it got a million views in the first week. Okay, like e that would be like like holy shit. Like ba projecting that forward, it would be the most watched video on the channel by far. It would it, like within a year it would probably be sitting at around four million views. You know that sort of thing. Like even if it did that well, um, I don't think it would be worth it. Still, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be worth. Uh, it wouldn't be worth it financially. It wouldn't be worth it. You know, like like emotionally. You know, like for 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 all the, all the things that 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 um 
that uh, I went through making and everything, it, it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be worth it in, in that respect. But the one way it will be worth it is having to be able to look back and say, you know, I made this crazy ass fucking project and, and it turned out that it was that, that I was capable of doing it. You know what I mean? Um, in, in that way, it will be worth it. But uh, I, don't, I don't know how important that that's something like that is. Like, how how do you weigh that um, compared to compared to other things? I don't know. But yeah, it, it's it's enjoyable. I'm I'm really sorry it's taking so long. Like, um, there there have been multiple stages of the project where like like I thought not that long ago that it, the video was only going to be about four hours long. Like the whole thing, I thought the whole thing was only going to be about four hours long, and um, then I started, uh, yeah. Uh, let's not talk about that. But then yeah, like it's like oh shit. Okay, well, which which are which are one I have. I, I just spent this amount of time just talking about chapter one. Fuck, you know, like that kind of like, oh shit, oh, all right, okay. Well, maybe it's still salvageable. No, okay, it's this long now. All right, cool, all right. So that's that's the kind of, um, that's the kind of uh, process it's been. So in, in that way, it's been very frustrating. More Probably more than anything else, it's been the most frustrating having to um, constantly reassess the project and constantly be like okay it's gonna be done this time oh no nope. okay it's gonna be done this time nope you know like uh but anyway uh let's 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 move on from that i think that's uh that's enough speaking about the witcher i hope that was a good, a good enough answer for you pet cat is soft how long have you been interested in writing or language? Did you feel it necessary to follow up the interest through education? Hope you're well and looking forward to everything you have to give. Uh, always. I've always wanted to, to write. I've always wanted to tell stories. Uh, I used to tell stories to my parents and my family when I was a kid. Uh, there hasn't been a time ever that I, that I don't remember wanting to tell stories. So uh, I don't know why. Uh, just maybe I was... My, my dad was, probably still is if he's still alive, my dad was, was quite a funny person, and I got a lot of my sense of humor from my dad, so uh, maybe it had something to do with I would try to emulate my dad's stories when I was, uh, when I was a kid, and that would make uh, my mom laugh, because my, my, my dad used to make my mom laugh all the time. Uh, so maybe it came from that, and because it was like, you know, you, you, when you're a kid, you get a lot of attention, you feel really good when, when you when you get to make your parents laugh and you're entertaining your parents. So maybe it was something like that. It was it was from that sort of space that I, I, I wanted to tell stories a lot. So I, I don't know if that's true or not, or I have no idea, but there's always, I've always wanted to tell stories. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm really all that interested in, in language. Um, I mean, obviously, yeah, but I'm, I'm not the kind of writer that really likes to play Scrabble. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's a lot of different kind of writers and, and, and one of them is like, yeah, let's, let's Scrabble motherfuckers. Do you play it? Like I'm a motherfucker at Scrabble because I just think about words all day. I'm always sort of, Whenever I know, I, I realize that that my my vocabulary is is stronger than average. I, I'm always kind of surprised, you know what I mean? Like it's like, oh, I know that word. Or uh, whenever I'm I'm writing something, I will just pull a word out of my ass, and I'm like, how do I even know that word? So like, when it comes to when it comes to language, I'm definitely someone who is not trained or even even deliberately someone that utilizes language. It's a lot of it is just kind of like pulling from experience somehow you know if that makes sense um is it good to be trained in, in this sort of thing like go, going to get like formal education about it i'm gonna say no but also yes in a certain way so i know that sounds shitty sorry i should just i shouldn't say shitty. i should just i should just answer the fucking question um going to school for writing is a waste of fucking time going to school to learn about other books that have been written and everything you know like that that's worth it but going to like a writing class or a, like a workshop anything like that that's a waste of fucking time don't do that um especially if you're paying money for it you can you can 
get that for free really easily with online groups and everything but i just be really really cautious when you're joining those online groups because there is nothing that writers like to do more than to sit around talking about how much they're not writing so like just just be careful but uh in terms of um formal education about learning about books and everything literature yeah for sure there's 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 so much that you can you can learn from that uh, a lot of it is is just fucking masturbation you know like um why are the curtains purple bullshit you know what i mean like but the trap is that you start thinking that literary criticism is only that and that's not the case at all there is legitimate literary criticism it's just filled with a lot of bullshit sometimes and you get t-rex runner and you get you know people analyzing dark souls you know so uh it's it's definitely a um it's it's definitely something that uh, is worthwhile but just just be aware that you need to try and uh and um keep things in perspective that you don't you don't turn into one of those people that is constantly overanalyzing things or it's very very easy to overanalyze something but um i don't know i'm kind of i'm kind of warming up to the idea of, of overanalyzing as sort of a <sighs> this isn't your question so i shouldn't go into it I'll, I'll 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 touch on it and then we'll move on to something else like i I think that it's a good exercise and it can be fun and can be enjoyable, but I don't like it when it is taken to the extreme that, um, well, this is the answer now and you, anything that goes against this just hasn't thought about it enough. You know, like it's, it's, it can be taken authority. As soon as it becomes authority, it's like, fuck off. You know what I mean? Like th that's, that's too far at this point. Like you always have to have a little bit of humor and have more perspective about it than, than to just think that this is the only thing that could possibly be. I think that's, that's a good, that's a good answer. I think, or a, uh, better perspective did someone just like undo my my undo 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 my my paving up of this uh lot of magma here i tossed you the boots boots oh i have boots now nice thank you for the boots oh diamond boots chant oh no flame fire no let's get an f in the chat boys and girls Saying boys and girls just, it doesn't have the same punch as boys, doesn't it? Or even just girls by itself. Let's get an F in the chat, boys. Or let's get an F in the chat, girls. But you say, let's get an F in the chat, boys and girls. It's just like, it's the like end. yeah, I, wa I, I want to be like, I want to be inclusive. But like, it's just, it just doesn't have the same kind of kick to it. Joe, he had it for the longest time. What? What? What do I, what do I have to have? Why am I being Joed? Why am I being Joed dot 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 dotted? F in the chat, ass eaters. <laughs> oh. Uh, I hope that was a good answer, Pet Catasoft. Sorry to, to go on kind of a, a ramble there. Thank you for throwing cookies at me. Uh, name I can't read. Hello, 321. Thank you very much. Hello, 321. He had both of the two pieces I gave I gave you. Oh. Oh, well, now we have the, the diamond chest plate jam too. Damn, we're, we're, we're pretty pimped up here, aren't we? Wait, what? What's this F? Oh, you can dual wield? Oh no, I threw my diamond pickaxe away. Oh, it's back. Pickaxe chain is back. Okay. Um, I don't want this. No. I'm just walking around with a door. Is this your slave server? <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there. Uh, thank you, Moana, for the 25 month three sub, halfway to 50. Holy shit. Uh, with the message, balls. All right. Thank you very much for that, Moana. Moana. <laughs> Moana. 
Balls, balls, balls. 25 months in the Pout Patrol. The One Trip Troop. Thank you, Moana. Uh, Caleb MH1 has resubscribed for three months. Three months in... What should we say? The Sleepy Lilies. May the cringe be with you, Caleb. I'm awake. My eyes are open. You've been uh, awake for a long time and you haven't had any... Uh, that haven't had enough sleep. Thank you, Caleb MH1. Uh, Action Caterers use 100 business to say, here's some mod related questions. Do you want to set it up so that when you die, you keep your stuff? It will be the same situation for everyone in the game currently. Also, what bad behavior would constitute a ban? Uh, I don't know enough about this game to know if that's a good idea or not. Wow, Lucid Memory, you look fucking like sharp. Holy shit, look at you. Uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, so I'm going to say whatever is currently the, the 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 mode that most people like the server to be on on different servers is what it should be. And bad behavior in a ban is, is like, um, you know, being abusive and harassment in, in chat. I don't know if harassment in the game is, is, is something that people allow. I don't know. Like, I kind of feel like if someone is just following someone around, just killing them constantly over and over and over again, that they should probably say, hey, cool it. But I don't. Like, if someone's doing that, then the person obviously deserves it, right? So, like, maybe it should be, maybe it should be okay. I don't know. No, no, seriously, I don't know. Don't be that guy, the Minecraft edition. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry. I don't know enough about this game and what the conventions are and what and what people commonly think. So just use your own discretion. But, yeah, if, if anyone's being harassing anyone else, then, then kick them or give them a temp ban. I don't know how that works. Toast Engineer used to miss to say, um, I've always wanted to write and have stories in my head that I really want to tell, but I find writing really, really frustrating and unpleasant. I usually just stare at a blank page for a few hours and then give up. If I do get to something, it's usually awful advice. Just do it anyway. Just just write and don't worry about what it is. Just write and write and write and write and then fix it later and just edit and have it out. And like, like I don't want to presume anything, but the, but the way that you're, you're describing it, I'm going to guess that you've never finished anything or you've never finished anything that that's that's up to the, the the standards that you want it to be at. And like, that's what you need to do. You need to finish something. Just just force yourself to get through it. Don't worry about what the end product is gonna be. And then and then take that, those lessons and use it again later or fix what you have. And you just you just gotta force yourself. You just have to. Um, I firmly believe that there are only certain, there are certain events that happen in a life that will change someone. Someone doesn't change unless something happens to them. And those big ones are usually, um, uh, the, the death of a parent, uh, the birth of a child, the losing of a, a longtime partner, um, a, an illness, a death scare, uh, turning 20 or turning 30 or turning 40 when you do go your decade, or there can be, sometimes there can be some big things that just hit you at the right time. Like you read something or um, someone, someone said something to you and it just triggered something inside of you. But these are rare and few and far between. So unless you want to just you want to live your life waiting for that to happen and waiting for the, for that change to come at you at, at a certain point. Um, you have to force it. You, you just have to sit down. You have to be like, I am deciding consciously right now. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. I am just going to fucking do this and then you do it. And I think that's, that's it. Uh, but I'm one of the kind of people, one of the people that doesn't believe in writer's block. I think that writer's block, I think that there's going to be times where writing is harder than others, but, uh, you, you just do it. Why do you have a head for, for legs? And you... writing does, is frustrating anyway. Even when it's, I would say even when it's going well, it's going to be frustrating. So. And you're eating a face. Just who, get it out. Who are you, X-Gen25? You can fix it later or you can redo it later. But sometimes you'll be stuck on one part, right? So if you just kind of get through it, then maybe it will start to get easier as you go. Whereas if you just keep judging what you've just done, you're not really going to move forward with it. Don't get so hung up on if it's any good or not. Just try and get it out. You have all these ideas, right? So just get them out on paper. And I rewrite and, and just fix lots of stuff. You know, it's... No one needs to see... The, the first five drafts even, you know, like if it's shit and you fix it and it's, it's shit again, then you just keep fixing it, you know, or you talk to someone about it. Maybe they have a suggestion on how you could fix it. Or I find what I'm reading too influences a lot on what I'm writing. So read. Lily's voice is so nice. I know, right? She doesn't think she has a nice oh, voice. You, and I, nice. And, I, and I tell her that and she doesn't believe me. No, because Peta. Yeah. <laughs> I get nasally sometimes. Sometimes the more I talk to, I find I get a little bit hoarse. 
Yeah, I just found out that that Ilsarath you're offline. I just wanted to teleport to you to get out of the cave. Uh, thank you, uh, as Ban the Bandit. Well, this is where I call a night and have. So call a night. Have a good stream, Joe. Thank you. Ace, Ace Ban the Bandit. Sorry, I said your name wrong the first time. Sakrix has resubscribed for 17 months with. So when are you guys building the shrine to Trash Chan JPH Waifu? I'm surprised it hasn't happened already, to be honest. But I think maybe there's a there's a, a team of builders, um, you know, that are strategically making plans to start building things in, in the server when uh, it dies down a bit and, and there's less lag. And uh, maybe they can secure a plot of land. The Weeb team. They just need a leader. Hey, Rough Dogs, how's it going? I can teleport to you now. Uh, shit, I hit F again. Teleport, Il Sarath. All right, this is no way. This isn't a trap, right? Oh my god! Oh, that was creepy. I got scared of your game. Oh, you got your own little castle. Oh, nice. Oh, I like that. What? You s Are you in the- I'm down here. What is that noise? Member of the Flexen squad, this house is best house, complimented by Flexen, Ilsaroth's house. What is that noise? It's the screaming of the doomed. Of the damned. Do you have a banshee down here? This is like that apartment we lived in. Do you remember? Like the sconces on the walls and all the brick, but it was like yeah. its own hell house. Yeah. Where they 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 just kept being murder suicides, yeah. yeah and exploding remember. cars. Not a joke, by the way. Not a joke. It was nice looking though. I will I will leave kelp as tribute here, and a spruce boat, and a puffer fish. Oh. all right. Um, what's the next question on Patreon? Maybe we can get through all the Patreon tonight. Kiefer O says, "Hey, a Joja Cola." And Lil E. Questions are dumb this time because I have no idea what to ask anymore. Ooh, I've exhausted it. Interesting. Favorite Discord related memory. I miss that place. Um the the one that comes to mind is uh playing Baba is you with everyone. I had a really good time doing that. I I, I thought that was a it it added to the game, you know? Like I was going through that um, like just just blasting through that game, and it seemed like there was a bunch of other people in in chat were uh, oh oh eat more bread. Wait, are you Geralt, or am I seeing things? Come back. I think I'm dead. I think I'm dead. Uh, I think Baba is you is is the uh, is the the one that I I am going to go with right now. But um, when the Discord was first was first um, formed, there was a time that was kind of nice where uh, everyone hadn't realized that that I was an idiot yet. So everything I said was was really funny. <laughs> So it's like a lot of my stuff would get pinned and people would be like, oh, hey, hey, you know, oh, he's here. Say stuff. And it'd be like, oh, OK, cool. You know what I mean? So um, there, there was that there was that period that uh, I thought was uh, th that was fun for kind of a, a really selfish way. Um, reading the discord after the Dangarampa streams was fun. I enjoyed doing that. I would skim through it after every single Dangarampa stream, especially the big ones that would happen. I would enjoy that and it'd be like the people's reactions to what happened in the game. Uh, and, and also like uh, my reactions too, you know, like it was, whoa, it, it was, uh, I enjoyed that. But I think, I think going with Bob is you. Anyone else got a, got a good um, Discord memory that they want to share? Maybe there's something I'm forgetting about. Why am I dying still? 
My favorite Discord memory Ooh. is when Kate was born. Ah, with the message that we did, or was someone that someone? Do you remember we we get we got home from the hospital? Yeah. And we hadn't been home very long, and we went on Twitter and we we posted right that that she was born, mm -hmm. and then it went into announcements. Right, I think you shared an announcement. The tweet. Yeah, I and made then this, it yeah. blew up, and it was like there was just message. I couldn't keep up with all the messages of just all these people just wanting to say congratulations and how happy they were, and people that had kind of been there too. A lot of them for the whole pregnancy, right? So like a lot of them had been there, kind of stage by stage, and it was just you know, I was very emotional already because you know Hello just had a baby and very sleep deprived, and I remember just sitting there and it was like, wow, like all these people are being so nice. I I remember doing the the Discord thing, but I hate to say it, I barely remember that after that. It was I, insane. Maybe... I it was like the amount of of like and all and the different the channels maybe, and, and 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 and, and DMs and, and on Twitter too. But like it just blew up, and like all the the people liking your announcement, like it was mm -hmm. just you know, like it was really something. That's my favorite memory. A lot of love that day for Baby Kate. Well deserved too. What was great about the score was that I was not taking itself too seriously, so really casual and friendly. Yeah, I I I would like for it to come back. Um, but yeah, we we need we need mods. And I don't know how we're gonna do that. That's the problem right now. I don't know how we're gonna get a mod team when when the community is already established, you know what I mean? It's gonna be tough. But I'd like for it to come back properly. And to be close to what it was before. Is there going to be a fourth child? Maybe. We haven't decided yet. Fan art. Yeah, the fan art museum is really good. I'm not poisoning anyone. That's good. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to go with Kifro. What is the best Halloween costume you've dressed up as? Alternatively, if money was no object, what would be a costume you'd like to do? Thanks. Uh, I've had some pretty normy costumes. Sorry, like I'd, I've never really taken Halloween all that seriously. So uh, when I was a kid, like I, I would have, um, I had the mask from Scream. I liked wearing that. Um, I can't remember what I was even younger than that. And, and that was pretty much it. And then we went back to Britain and Britain wasn't really a, a place that, um, that celebrated Halloween all that much, at least not in the area that we were in. So it wasn't that big of a deal. And, and, it's, and it stopped being something that we could do. I kind of feel like maybe I had a mask, the, the, something that the mask from Scream before Scream was a thing. Was, was that Scream, was that mask around before Scream came out? Or maybe it was something that was similar to it. That kind of like that open, uh, um, uh, skeletal ghost, uh, Grim Reaper kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's pretty much it. Since being an adult, we never really had the opportunity until lately. And now we don't really have the time. I got a, a rooster mask that I, that I put on, um, last year, but this year I didn't dress up at all because I wanted to, uh, it was the first year I took Finn out and I didn't want to have anything obscuring my view or anything. Cause I was just terrified the whole time that I, I was out with him and it turned out it was fine but like um i was just terrified the whole time the like holy shit like what if he gets away from me what if, what if someone grabs him you know like oh there's gonna be a lot of costume kids out what if he gets mixed up with some other kids i don't know where he is it was it was nothing like that so uh, I, I was just worried for no reason as usual so um i uh i um I, I think I can I can get something good to dress up as next year. I think I like to be Iron Man. I don't really like superheroes all that much, but I like Iron Man. So if it, money was no object, I get like a proper Iron Man suit. I think I would really enjoy that. So, yeah, um, or like a proper Batman suit. I th think those are the only superheroes I really like. Although Batman's kind of dumb, but you know, Iron, Iron Man's kind of dumb too. But I like I like the idea of the Iron Man suit. Um, but I don't know, with all the all the memes that we have now, like it would be fun to dress up as some characters, like dress up as Nagito or something. Or Pickle Nagito. What if I could dress up as Pickle Nagito? Just a, a, a big giant dick big, with, with a wig yeah, on. Yeah. Pickle. What about you, Lily? My best costume 
was when I was a kid. I don't know how old I was. Maybe like six or something. I was Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. And I even had the freckles. Oh, and I, really? I had the pigtails. I had the freckles with the, with the like eye pencil. And I had a little basket with a, a little gray stuffed dog. And, and the you know, little blue dress. And there's actually, I don't, I don't have any picture of it though. I don't think, unfortunately, I didn't take one when I left. I had my read the photo albums moment before I moved out because I knew I probably wouldn't have the chance to see a lot of those pictures again, but I don't think I grabbed one of those ones. You'll just have to take my word for it. It was very cute. <laughs> if I could dress up as anything, I've always wanted to be like a classy witch. Cause I've never had the money to actually splurge on like a Halloween costume, but I would like to have like the peasant blouse and the corset over top and the long skirt, the full skirt and like, you know. Like a classy hocus pocus witch? Or? Yeah. Not like a green faced witch, like a, like, yeah, like a hocus pocus witch or like you would see on a, on a video game or something, I guess, right? Like the kind of, from a village kind of witch, you know? I think that would be fun. Would you rather dress up as Triss or Yennefer? Yennefer. Yennefer. Who's best girl? To me, I like Yennefer. She has a bitchy quality that I like. Donkey Donkey Kong said trans rights. Is that what that says? <laughs> Good for you, Donkey Kong. All right, how do I get down? How do I get? Oh, it's here. Okay. I also have a bitchy quality personally, so I I respect that. And I think I would make a very good Yennefer with a wig. I think so too. What's the server address? How do I obtain it? Someone in chat might say it for you. If they don't within the next couple of minutes, then I'll do it. I'll tab out and do it for you. But it's probably full. I'm not sure. Thank, thank you for the more laid back questions, Kifuro. Um, and I think that might be... Okay, we have two more we have micah w which is quite extensive but and then we have musica which isn't anything at all so it's just it's just a comment so i think we can probably finish patreon tonight and then we just have the 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 discord questions next week and then we can um open up the new round of questions for next time in case you you haven't seen these q a's for a while uh, we used to do them once a, once a month we would answer the questions over a month um, like usually a lot of streams back to back, uh, but now we've, we've changed it to, uh, we stream once a week on the weekend and the questions are done when we're out of questions and then we open the next round. And I think this is a much healthier way of doing it. Do you agree? Which, sorry. The, the way that we're doing it now, like just once a weekend and, and when we're done, we're done. Like that's a more healthy way of doing it than, than stressing out about having to have all the questions done before the month's over. Yeah. Cause there were a lot of questions, right? Well, I feel like. It also lets Before, us be able to waffle a bit. we were doing like three or four in a row or trying to do them in a row and it was just exhausting. And I would find that at the beginning it seemed we were giving better answers and then we were kind of rushing, I felt like, at the end because, you know, mm -hmm. we were worried we were never going to be done. You know, it was like this big three or four in a row. Too big of a stream, you know, like too much and too short of a time. You get kind of burned out. So I feel like this way, when it's, you know, it's happening every week, we're going to get through them eventually, but at least I feel like there's more of a quality there than eventually. Yeah. Eventually we will. I feel bad though. Like depending on how quickly we get through the next two, I guess, I don't know. Like some of these are quick questions here. I see. So I don't know how long it'll, if we could do even one person or two people on, on, on Twitch if possible. Depending yeah. on how big they are. I feel bad that we didn't take any Twitch. Well, they're all part of the same the same you know? group, right? I know, but I just feel like we only did Patreon today, you know, like I feel kinda of mm. bad that we never okay. we never well, switched we, at all. We, we, there might be people here that were waiting and like we never even we switched at all, you know, so we, we, we'll just see how long it takes. If it takes forever, you know, then we can do that. We can't. You know, it's already after two, but if if possible, if it doesn't take us that long or as long as we think then I thought this was going to be hey, hey, but it's not. It's okay. hey, why? Are you making the other hey backwards? Who's doing this? You've been working on this for a while. I'm on my, my fourth wind, so I might crash at any moment. And that might be it, so. 
So far, so good. So I understand not reading Twitch questions. Well, it's it's uh, it's Twitch sub questions go into a Discord thing, and and that's that's those are also set ahead of time. So if you're a Twitch sub, you you get to ask uh, two questions every single month as well. well. Well, not every single month, every single round. Um, so I'll give a warning about that, that about that next time. Uh, but they're they're in the same pile. They're they're considered the same as the Patreon ones. It's just uh, they're in a separate um, uh, file. You know, we have a file for for. Patreon Usually questions. we alternate between them. Yeah, but we're close to the end of the Patreon list, so it's kind of like, let's get that list power done. through. Yeah. I don't know, he was calling you, but he's not calling you now. All right, I'll give it another shot. I feel like the biggest problem I have is that I just don't know how to improve it once it's written. I see it doesn't have the properties writing I like has, but I don't know how to get there. I guess at that point, I just have to start over. P.S. Did you get my Duck Lord... I mean, Discord message. I don't know how this newfangled technology works. PPS, you can team with me next time I participate in a game jam, even just as a writer. Oh, that's a nice offer. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the time to take you up on it, but that's a nice offer. Thank you for that. I, I haven't checked my Discord messages in a while. I'm probably not going to until the end of the stream now because we're, we're right next to the end. Um, yeah, getting something where you need it to be is difficult. Um, I would say that you have to have someone else judge your work. You can't really judge your work uh, at the beginning. Uh, it's going to you can put it away, like file it in a drawer and then come back later and then you'll be able to judge it like a long time later. And even but... we judge each other's work. Yeah. So even when we thought it was at a level that we thought it was good enough, we would still edit it together and re do rewrites and stuff and, and discuss. So it's great if you can find someone that you can, you can have them read your work, you could read their work, you could trade off. Or... Um, I, I honestly feel like with every book that I've written, I've gotten better. And hopefully that's true. And it's not just all in my head. But I do feel like I'm improving with everything that I write. I have like a little bit of more coming into my own style, I feel like, with everything that I write. So maybe that would be the same for you too, where your first book, you might read it and think, oh, wow. I don't know, but then when you write the second one, maybe you'll look back at the first one and see the actual progression and, and how you improved. But you won't know that if you don't get it out, right? So if it just stays in your head and it's always just an unfinished project, then you'll never know how good you might get. And I just feel like don't expect like, huge things from it. Just just kind of treat it as a stepping stone and just aim to do a little bit better with everything, everything that you write. And you won't be able to judge that until it's done and you've had some time away from it and then you go back and look at it. And you might feel it's complete shit and you might look, go back and look at it and be pleasantly surprised even because there's stuff that I've written too that I, I'll write, write something now and I'll read it and I'll be like, I'm really happy with how this is coming along compared to the others, it's really good. And then I'll go back and read the others and think, oh, actually it's not as bad as I thought. So it could go either way for you. And it might be a good confidence boost if you realize it's not that bad. I also think that it's gonna take you or anyone, it's gonna take anyone a very, very long time before you are actively working on improving something and practicing is making you worse, you know, like, you will have already long, you know, made it for lack of a better word or term before you are seeing you're going backwards when it comes to progressing your ability in, in something like art, I think. Is the world supposed to pop in like this or is it because it's because it's the server? It's kind of kind of strange. So I, I would take solace in that and just keep at it, keep on keeping on and, and you'll see improvement. Uh, actually, Katerie's on a business say, I'm waiting in the class trial room for the class trial to begin with two other ultimate studs, students. Um, <laughs> what? Oh, now I'm confused and I'm turned around. Uh, shit. Oh, there's the hey, hey. All right. Okay, cool. So go ahead. And let's let's read out Micah's questions so we can get through them. And um, I don't want to rush, though. So... If, if we're out of out of gas after this, then we'll be out of gas. But I think we should be able to answer at least something from Twitch. That's fine. Just if we can, that's all I'm saying. We don't have to. Like, I don't want to rush through it. Just if we can. Micah W says, Hey, Joe, it's so great to have these streams back. And I love the new weekly format. <laughs> Imagine how long ago Micah wrote that. <laughs> oh, how's it going, Micah? Questions. 
You and Lily have told us a lot about your lives growing up and especially what your parents were like, but I don't think either of you have mentioned your grandparents much, if at all. What were they like? What kind of people were they? Did you spend much time with them growing up? Did you like them? Did they like you? Any funny, interesting stories that either of you could share about them? I realize this is a pretty broad question, so talk about them in any way you see fit. I don't have much to say about my grandparents, sorry. Uh, my grandparents... Both both sets of my grandparents weren't they weren't bad people, but I didn't know them all that well. Um, both of my grandparents on my mom's side have been dead for a while. Um, both my parents, my my grandparents on my dad's side, I don't know. I don't talk to them anymore. I don't talk to my to my dad anymore. Like one of them could be dead. Both of them could be dead. I have no idea. My dad could be dead. And I have no idea. Uh, it's it's been that long. Um, but I got along better with my dad's parents than my mom's parents. Uh, my dad's parents were were more. I don't think I don't even down to earth is not the right word, but they were warmer. Whereas my my mom's parents were very cold. So um, I don't know what's going on in the game right now, guys. Like <laughs> I don't know what what what, what you guys are doing. Um, but my my mom's parents lived in Scotland, whereas my dad's parents lived in Wales, and we lived in Wales for 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 a long time so i just saw them more uh but i don't really have any any extreme interactions with with any of them uh i have a lot of pleasant memories about my dad's dad that we would we would go um often he would take us to to like local beaches and stuff in the area you know like we would go on like weekend we go on a long drive and we go to a beach and we go for a walk and we'd see the sights and, and, and stuff and i enjoyed doing that and th those are some good memories um, also some scary memories too. There was one time when we went up this this really this really tall cliff um, above the ocean, and uh, this is not the case where my memory has exaggerated it in hindsight. Like like this cliff was really tall, um, and there was no safety railing, no nothing. We just go up, and it's just like okay, well here we are at the top of this fucking cliff that you could just fall down or if there's a strong wind we're out of here you know what i mean like it's kind of kind of freaky thinking thinking back on that um but yeah i uh i had a i, I mostly pleasant memories about them but there there's a lot of dysfunctional stuff that i've that i've learned and you know as i become an adult i, I can look back and I'd be like yeah okay that was kind of fucked up you know like not not the best um but my uh, my mom's my mom's parents were were kind of very 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 cold and didn't want much to do with anyone really. Um, I'm sure if you got to know them, uh, or they were the kind of people that uh, they don't want to talk to you until you're an adult. You know what I mean? It's like like children should be seen and not heard. That kind of that kind of attitude, and uh, they didn't make it. I didn't make it to being an adult in time to interact with them because they fucking died. So, um, yeah. So I don't really have anything to say about them. Sorry. Was that question directed at you too, or? Yeah. Do you want to answer? Because you don't have to. I I know. Like, it, honestly, it might be best if you don't. But if you want to, go for it. I just I. I know all of mine, you know. Yeah. I don't want to go on and on and on. I, all of my grandparents. That's not what. Are, that's are not still what I'm alive. saying yet. It's just, yeah. They're all alive. My uh, my oldest grandparent actually will be ninety next year. Um. What were they like? I still talk to my grandmother and my dad's mom. She's the only one of them that I still talk to. <laughs> I don't talk to my parents anymore. I barely talk to my brother. Um, I don't talk to my uncle. I don't talk to my mom's parents, but I talk to my dad's mom. I, um, I miss her actually. I, uh, she's the only person I talk to now long distance. That's like, I actually were actually on the phone talk to and, uh, and she'll talk to the boys and I send her pictures and stuff. And that's nice. I, um, I would like to get back to Toronto so she could see them before she dies because she's getting old right like she's she's in her mid 80s now and she reminds me all the time not in a in a weird way i actually really appreciate that about her my mom's parents are always like we're gonna die soon guilt 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 she's just kind of like yeah i've had a good life i'm getting old i'm not gonna make it another five years so i hope i'm like you know? that when i get she's to just that age. so chill about it if, I, just, if I get to that age yeah. i just respect it so much this kind of 
not fucking around, just this is the way it is, you know? Um, my grandfather is, was, because he's in a home now, so he doesn't do it anymore, but he was a, a prescription pill abusing alcoholic who was abusive to everybody. I would call to talk to my grandmother and he would scream at me and swear at me on the phone. And I don't even think he knew who I was half the time. So I don't really know him very well and I don't know much about him which I always thought was a shame because I kind of that whole branch of the family is kind of a mystery and culturally and everything I would have liked to have had more knowledge from that side of the family um, I don't have a lot of memories with them because they weren't in Toronto for most of my my childhood we had to go and visit them and stay over when we did and we didn't do that that often and it was always more um, probably like with your mom's parents it was a little bit more formal because we didn't mm -hmm. see them so often so by the time we kind of broke the ice and, and got comfortable it was time to leave again my grandmother would sleep over a lot like when she would come into t to toronto and she would stay she would sleep in my bed and i would sleep on the floor so we were kind of like roomies while she would stay over and sometimes when they were fighting she'd stay over for a while so i saw a lot of my grandmother but not of my grandfather my mother's parents are very very old school european greek just zero tolerance if you go against what they want very controlling people i saw a lot of them growing up i used to spend like whole summers with them um, i do have some good memories with them particularly my grandmother and i used to bake um pita and everything for for new year's i used to go every new year's eve for years and i would spend the whole day there baking and we'd have lunch and it was like a big thing and holidays with them and stuff, you know, that were nice. It was nice getting the family together, but they were very formal. When I would go over and bake, they were kind of themselves. Um, they do not approve of any of my life choices. They do not approve that I don't speak to my parents. They've guilted me nonstop to the point that I had to cut them off about it. And that's... I guess that's it. I feel like my grandmother, my dad's mom, actually likes me. Maybe even loves me. And... If she doesn't approve, she doesn't say shit. You know, like she just kind of, oh, you're not talking to your dad anymore. She's the one in the middle. It's her son. You know, like that's, I'm, I'm sad this happened, but that's your decision. You know, whereas my other grandparents couldn't just be chill about it. So it just destroyed our relationship. They didn't approve that I'm not married, that I had children. I don't think they ever liked Joe. Like they were always very reserved and kind of cold toward him. And, um, just kind of toxic people if, if I'm being completely honest so whether they like me or not I don't think they like me and I don't really care okay and I think that's it I don't have anything really like a great story to tell but I I don't really see the point in beating a dead horse about it either you know I'll just say my mom's parents never met Leo they were invited to the hospital when Finn was born and they didn't come. They were sick that day, conveniently. Even I'm mad about that and, and I try to stay out of it. My, I was induced with Leo, so I actually said to my grandmother, "I'm he's coming on Sunday at such and such a time, probably. If you're available that night or Monday, anytime Monday. <laughs> no, you just show up and said, well, hey, it's the Losers Club. And then you start saying that and he's like... Typ typical Nova. Hi, Nova. Whoa, who's this behind me? Um, But yeah, I, I, I literally gave them a date and time. I'm having a baby. You've had nine months to prepare for this. And my grandmother said, well, they don't keep you in the hospital like they used to. I was in the hospital for a week when I had your mom. So I don't know, you know, if, if we'll be able to make it. But they made it when my mom was in the hospital and they made it when my uncle passed away. They made it to his funeral and they make it to when they want to make it, right? But... We lived in Toronto with them. Leo was almost a year and a half when we moved here. And I tried so many times. Can you come here? Can we meet you somewhere else? Can we meet you at a restaurant? You can meet Leo. And they were conveniently always busy or it wasn't convenient or we should come there. And they were kind of out of the way because we don't drive. So I think that sums up my feelings about them is just that in a year and a half, they saw Finn. Finn was, I think, 10 months old the last time they saw him. And Leo, they've never seen. And he's going to be three in February. So 
Yeah. And of course they haven't met Kate and they will never meet Kate. Who the fuck is Leo? Eo. They've never met Eo. Eo. So for people who are so family, 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 so important. I guess it depends if there's a wedding ring on your finger for that family to count. Is that a count. stormtrooper? And that's it. I don't have anything else. I don't have anything else nice to say. And my dad always said, if you don't have anything nice to say, then shut up. So. Oh, man. He didn't follow that advice a mm. lot. How is that person flying? What? What's going on? Who's that? How are you doing this? Do you feel pressure to not take your children places because of the potential scene they could make? I avoid family from the restaurants. But I am... Um, also, an outspoken not family of kids. Yeah, we don't take them to restaurants just because I worked in a family restaurant for 10 years and I'm good, thanks. We took them once and they were actually well behaved, but. How did this happen? But yeah. No, Jake, we are not officially married. We are common law for like 12 years now. Yeah. And we're engaged. We're not but officially married. He asked me, but we just haven't actually was... gotten to it yet. Too busy yeah. having babies. Just simpler just to say it that way. But yeah, we've we said a couple times on the stream before. We will one day. I'm not even a real dragon. Don't tell them that. They're gonna get all kinds of ideas now. <sighs> God, leave them something, you know, like don't have to wreck everything. What was Micah's next question? <clears throat> Most people in America who are old enough to remember it have a where were you on 9-11 story. With you and Lily not being American, I was wondering if either of you had any where were you memories from that day or did it not make quite as big of an impression on you being so separated from it both physically and emotionally and also being teenagers. I was also curious if you noticed any change in the culture around you after that day. Were your friends and family more paranoid? Did you notice a rise in Islamophobia or any other increases in bigotry in those around you? I'm only really aware of how American culture reacted to it. So getting perspective from those who were living elsewhere at the time really interests me. Uh, I remember where I was because I remember thinking that it was a joke and as bad as that sounds, uh, we were still living in Britain, but I was on vacation in Canada actually, because my family was trying to decide if they wanted to move back to Canada a second time. Uh, so we were on vacation, uh, in Canada, um, and, uh, it actually delayed our flight. We, we had to, uh, um... We, we were ended up staying in Canada for a little bit longer because of that, um, because of 9-11. So I remember I was I was asleep when it was happening and my mom came in to, to, to wake me up, you know, and she said something like, you know, you should, you should get up. There's this there's this big thing happening with with their their planes being flown into buildings. And I was like internally like, like fuck off <laughs> that's not happening <laughs> like no like uh and then i got up and i was like oh all right so that that's that's probably the only reason why that's memorable to me because it didn't really have that big an, an impact on me it didn't I, it's not something that i was connected with it's not something that's that was important to me at the time uh looking back it's like one of the most most important events in modern history you know like it's it's changed a lot of of our of our global civilization if we're allowed to call it that um so i i i'm sort of glad i remember where it was where it was but i uh i don't know i i don't really have much to say about it other than that i i don't think i noticed any any change in people um in in britain um I don't think I, I don't I don't didn't know enough about people in Canada to, to know if there was any change after that. I have noticed that there is quite a bit of Islamophobia in, in Canada, um, but I don't know if it's because of that or if it's just because the, the that's the, the, the most recent group that is emigrating into the country in, in large numbers. You know, it used to be decades and decades ago, generations ago, it was it was like 
Japanese people were were considered, you know, like oh, holy shit, you know, the, the, there was what's what's Japanese phobia? I don't know what the, if there's even a word for it. And um, Italians, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's just every group that that starts to emigrate and is seen as as the other, they're coming in is has been uh, treated poorly. Um, I don't know enough about it to say if any group has been treated way more poorly than anyone else. I don't know. But yeah, I, I know some of it now, but I have no idea what the comparison is. Sorry. I was on my way to the uh, assembly. I think I was in grade 10. Grade 10, I just started. We had an assembly because it was beginning of the school year and we're all going to the auditorium and they made an announcement over the PA and then they they tried to... Like, the, this, the, the, the content for the assembly was immediately put on hold um, and they wanted to talk about what was happening instead. And it was just very, um, very surreal. When I was younger, I was, New York was like my, the, my big thing. You know, I was. Is he pickled Nagito? God damn. Sorry, go ahead. I, um, if anyone was going to New York, they had to bring me a newspaper. You know, I like anything that they could bring me a map. Like I collected everything. I was really into New York City. And I used to say when I was older, I wanted to move there and probably typical teenage stuff right like I thought it was a really exciting place I'd never been there before I really wanted to go so when it happened it was like war is coming to New York was pretty much how they were they were describing it to us like the second rate information we were getting in school you know that day and I was really just like wow like my, my first thought was something along the lines of of all the places they had to attack like it, why would it have to be New York <laughs> like just because I love New York so much and I wanted to go there so badly. And the way it was sounding was like it was going to be destroyed, you know, like, you know, it was out of control, planes smashing into buildings, everyone was dying, you know, it was just, it just sounded like something you never expected to live through, you know? Like, I really love New York too when I was a kid. Sorry, sorry to, to, to ask, but like, is, is that a common millennial thing or is it just because of friends or what? Like, what this is before I even, that was part of the appeal of friends to me was that it was in New York. Yeah. I read about it in a book and, um, after that, I was just borderline obsessed with it. It was like, if you had asked me back then, where do you want to go? Before I said Hawaii or Paris or anything, I would have said I wanted to go to New York City. You know, like it was just all about New York for me. That's part of the appeal of a lot of the mafia movies that I like to watch back then, too, is a lot of them took place in Brooklyn and the Bronx and, like, Queens. But, yeah, so there was that. That was another part of the question. Oh, I had a friend, a really good friend, actually. We'd been, um, we'd been friends for like maybe eight years or something at that point. I'd been to her house. She'd been to my house. We celebrated all our birthdays together. We talked on the phone all the time. She wasn't my best friend, but she was in my close group of friends. And they were from Iraq. And she was Muslim. And... I remember her being so scared after all that happened and she really kind of retreated into herself very much. Um, I don't know if anything was ever specifically said to her about it or I, if she was afraid that something would be said about it. Like she, she didn't give me specifics, but within that year, she, uh, she made new friends with another group that were all Muslim and she stopped hanging out with us. So I remember being very upset when I was when that happened because I essentially had lost one of my closest friends and at that age I didn't understand why and I I was really really upset about it and I kind of felt like she was choosing other people over me and you know just because I'm not Muslim now I don't fit in and that's not that's not fair we've been friends for so long and part of it might have been our age and like a growing up thing you maybe she had more in common with them than she had with me or but thinking back now she you know she, they probably just felt better together you know than with everything going on and there was a lot of stuff in the media and you would have like vandalism and stuff like that a lot of like like joe said about like other you know like a lot of fear of not understanding another culture and and just kind of widespread way of thinking and everything like that and I don't know if it was how bad it was here compared to other places because I don't I haven't been to other mm. places but mm. we lost touch after that after high school I lost track of her I don't even know what happened to her now that I'm thinking about it but yeah she was a really good friend of mine 
I was really upset when, when that happened, and I, I assume that's why you know, it had something to do with it. What the fuck? Quick ones. Have you read the Percy Jackson books? No, I haven't. Have you read the Artemis Fowl books? No, I haven't. What month did you officially start this Witcher project? As in, when did you read page one of the first book or boot up the first game, whichever came first, just so I have an idea of how long this has been brewing for. Take your time with it, by the way. You played that game a long time ago. Does that count? What do you mean? When it first came out, right? Didn't you play like... Or you were going to play, I can't remember now. Later, weebs. Um... Technically, yeah, I, I played the game when it first came out, Witcher 1. Um, so I don't that's not that's not the start at all. Um full time, like doing nothing else, it's it's been I what was it after Kate was born or right before? Yeah, I, think it was before. It was, I think it was right before. Uh, reading like the games and, and the, the starting of the project has been about two years. I can't remember the, the first month of that, but for reading the books, it was around that time. Um, Cause I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't want to, to read the books until I'd done the games all the way through and seen everything I wanted to see. Uh, so I think it was around the time that the baby was born is when I started reading the the, the, the books. So I'm going to say... I'm going to say April? Maybe, maybe April, two months before she was born? I think. Oh my god. If you could pick any game company to work for to gain experience for starting your own company one day, which would you be most interested in? It's a short question, so don't worry about explaining your answer. Thanks so much. Catch you in the next stream. Uh, two, uh, one would be From Software because I feel like they uh, make their games really, really fast. And like their games have a bit of, they, they do lack a bit on the polish end of things. And they're not as, uh, as um, you know, refined as they as they could or should be but i feel like for the quality of their games and how how well they're received i think that uh they make them so fast that i'm really interested to see what their workflow is like compared to co compared to other developers and, and other knowledge that i have you know as flawed as that is uh but the other one would be naughty dog because i feel like naughty dog has just just the best presentation and i would like to see exactly how they get their presentation quality to be so high and um and I, I, I want to see what their what their magic is. Is the server lighting out here? Maybe I'd like to see what, what what that's like. And um, I think I could learn a lot from that. I'd be interested. Um, yeah, I think th th those are my two answers. Did Mike have another question? That was it? Okay. That's it. I'm trying to think if there's anyone else I'd like to see. Like almost anything really. Like Bethesda, just to see how 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 bad it isn't there, you know what I mean? Like how how bad it isn't. You know, like I'm sure it's not nearly as bad as everyone thinks it is. So what's going on there? You know what I mean? Like like let's let's find out. Um But also how bad it is. <laughs> Thank you, Micah. And this is the last one from Patreon for this one, and it isn't a question, so we can we can get through this, and maybe we can ask we can uh, answer some people on um, on Discord, and then we will call it a night. All right, Bob Squad, you can kill me. I'll stand here. It's clearly important to you, bro. You can you can kill me.
what is the rationale behind not releasing the near video? Just I, I just like that there's a there's a five hour video on a on a well received game sitting on the channel that I could publish at any time that is just that that is really you know that people really want to have and I just I just I don't know it just it just amuses me that it's there and I can just tease all the weebs about it that you know I it's there it's done I could I could hit it at any any moment but uh but I'm not going to. Nah, it's not done. Uh, I I canceled it because uh, a lot of near fans were very upset with me about not uh, playing the other games, and I made it pretty clear that I, I don't have time to play the other games. So it's like this or nothing, and they became so obnoxious about it that I was like, okay, fuck it, then it's nothing. Um, so I I just canceled it. Uh, since then, I felt bad about that, and it probably wasn't as bad as I I, I, I remember it being because uh, that was sort of during the time where, where the streaming thing was kind of getting to me a little bit. Um, but, uh, I I'll, I'll do it. I will play the other games as well, but I don't know when, and I can't promise either, but I will try. So that's it. But I think if I do do that, I will, I will do videos on them in order as I play them instead of taking it as a whole. And then maybe I'll just have a recap at the end, do, do it in a different way. Anyway, what is Musica's question? Hey Joseph, I know this is late and it isn't really a question. I just wanted to point out to you that you should pay attention to the lore and what happens to the story surrounding the flower in The Witcher 2 and 3. You will understand when you get to it. I hope you will realize it's dark secrets like I did. Okay, so if you're talking about the Rosa Remembrance without saying any spoilers about this, I don't know if I agree with that. I, if, if you know what we're talking about, then you know what we're talking about. Hey Chad Ketchy. Uh, I don't know if I agree with that. Um, I, I don't think that's a thing. I just, I just think that's something that you can, that you can fun, have some fun theorizing about, but I, I don't, I don't think that's a real thing and it's any, any, any shade being thrown at Triss or anything like that. Um, I, I'm, I, I think Triss gets too much shit, uh, and I will go into great detail about that in, in the video, um, that Triss gets too much hate and... She definitely deserves some of it, but uh, I kind of feel like, what the fuck Pokemon is that? I, I, I feel like um, they they had written themselves into a corner and they have to do that when they did it to her, so. so that's it. So there might be another Patreon question that came in late that's going to be pushed to the next one, but if we can answer it uh, next week, if, if it's relevant, then maybe we should, but for now... We are you done. We can close this. We don't need this open. Yay. So how many do we have left on, on the Q&A? We have... Uh, the meme question was last one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, and a comment at the end. So 10, we have 10 questions. So that's that's pretty good for next week, right? So we can do one now, who is, unless it's really difficult. Hold on, is it difficult? Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, so we'll answer Ty's question and then we'll say thank you to any messages and, and uh, subs and bits if there are, are any that we're behind on. Um, and then we will call it a night. Um, the, the Minecraft server is going to stay active, so I don't know like what you guys want to do about that, but we'll discuss it, I guess. Hello. Considering you spent both time, or I guess time in both, uh, Canada and England, have you ever considered moving back or anywhere else other than Canada? England? England. <gasps> oh, no. Wait for it. This is why. I'm quite fond of England for funding my education, given that both parents were lacking in most ways. So there, it sounds like in England, so that's why they're saying England. Oh, okay. That's the first part of this question. The other part is not related. Uh, it's Wales, but I, I actually one of the, the only um, 10 British people in the whole entire world that just does not give a shit about any of that. So uh, it's okay. Um, I... Good night, Ralph Cogs. I um, would love to travel and spend some time in other countries. Uh, there are certain countries that I will never go to ever because they scare me. Uh, one of them is is China. China scares the shit out of me. Um, Mexico is another one uh, because of 
stories that I've heard that I think that, you know, there's a slim chance, but I still don't want to take it that if I went to any of those countries, I might not come back from those countries, you know, because of what's happened to, to some Canadian tourists. Um, Russia kind of scares me too, but maybe if I stay to the, to the, the tourist areas, I'd be okay. And Australia scares me because of the spiders. I'm not really that big a fan of the spiders, but I think I could probably handle it but i would be paranoid the whole time i was there that i'm gonna see a gigantic fuck off spider and it's gonna be in my shoe or something and yeah so um oh suspicious stew let's eat it uh as for as for moving to somewhere um i don't know i i, I like canada uh i would consider going back to to britain but i'm not sure i think i think canada is my home now um i would consider the states but the healthcare situation that you guys have kind of scares me like what if something bad happens and we can't afford health insurance or uh you know my my kids can't afford health insurance in the future and i was the one that brought them there and now they're stuck you know with those problems you know like i, I kind of feel like that's a really big big thing that i can't really ignore you know it's a benefit from where we're living right now um but i would consider it uh and i would probably consider some somewhere in in, in europe you know like one of the scandinavian countries or maybe even italy i think i would like to go and see them italy and greece but uh th these are just like places i would like to go at some point and and see but yeah uh i think if like top on my list right now to move would probably be somewhere else in canada like i'd um like ottawa or maybe vancouver right do you feel the same way? Yes. I have a little bit of a crush on Vancouver. I would like to see it. But that's largely because it's water, you know, the ocean. And a uh, bigger city than Halifax. So we didn't go back to Toronto, maybe. But it's more expensive than Toronto, too. So. States I would consider, but I don't know. And Europe I would consider, but I've never been, so. I always had this thing when I was younger that I would have loved to travel and stay for an extended period of time to kind of get a feel of what living there would be like, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And now that we have kids, I don't know how that would work, but it might still work. But if that opportunity ever came along where we could go and stay somewhere for a few months or six months or something and live like a local would live you know and have rent an apartment or rent a house or you know and cook and do our grocery shopping and i would really enjoy that in theory anyway i don't know how if i would like it in practice but that's something that always appealed to me not just to travel and be there for a week or two and just do the tourist stuff but to actually be there you know and be able to say yeah i lived here and i learned some of the language and i learned some of the culture and everything good night waste time wonder Vancouver is pricey, but you can get heroin anywhere. Oh, sold. Just like the heroin. I'm in Toronto right now, and it's a bit clowny sometimes with Doug Ford trying to be mayor despite being premier. <laughs> Enjoy, enjoy Toronto, even if it's clown. Like Elden Ring, the Elden Ring trailer. Politics. Oh, politics. As someone who has a whole half of their family in Mexico and visits every year, that place scares the hell out of me, too. I don't know if it's wrong of me to, to, to be scared of certain places. This guy. Oh, the rest of Carmi, I want to leave. Interesting. It's probably better than Moncton still. <sighs> yeah. Don't ask questions. It's, it's okay here. It's it, there's way worse places, but 
But, yeah. but man, they just you just call people and they're like, yeah, we can do that, and then it just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. Okay. I had an appointment this morning and I took a taxi to go and luckily I did or I would have had to get up even earlier to walk there so I took a taxi I didn't tell you this um, right across from where I was going there were three police cruisers on the street and two of them had blocked off like half a block like not even that much you know maybe even less than half a block of the side street and one was parked in the middle and my driver was was saw it and was like wow Something's going on over there. Must be something violent. So many police. <laughs> it's been a busy morning for the police. <laughs> there was a car accident, hit a pole, and you should have seen the car. The car just, that's a write off. And we missed the turn for where I was going. He was so looking at the, ambulance, the the police cars. This is NPC dialogue. We went right past, and then we had to turn around and come back. And even then, when we were coming back, he was waiting to make. A left so we were waiting for the other cars to go so that we could go and everyone was slowing down to look at all the commotion on the street of like and there was nobody around it was just the cruisers parked there it's not like you know car accident and like dead body in the car or anything like that there was nothing to see you know like and they were so like we had to wait and wait and wait to make this stupid turn just because everybody else was looking to and I thought wow that's a busy that's a busy day and a busy morning in Moncton, you know, like the whole two occurrences where they were dispatched, you know? Yeah, that kind of sums it up. The only way that could be more NPC would be this like... This isn't even the middle of nowhere. This is a city. This yeah, is like one of the three cities in this province. It's not like we're in like bumfuck or anything, right? Like we're like, it's, it's, it's a proper city. Only could be more NPC dialogues. Be like, oh, that's the fifth murder this week. I wonder if there's something going on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Did Ty have another question? Yeah. Secondly, I'm a student studying game arts, mainly 3D modeling and concept art, and I got invited to my first studio after meeting some devs at EGX. Would you jump at the chance to visit a dev studio? Side note, I saw a first year in my university watching your stream, Total Weep Trash. Really? Damn. What was it like to see one of those out, out in the wild? In their natural habitat. Uh, I would definitely jump to, to, to see any studio. Um, or, or or talk to any any dev that that's worked in that kind of thing. I, I recently spoke to someone who worked on uh, or was involved with uh, God of War, and I found that we, that was really interesting. Yeah, like there's there's no bad information that's going to come out of that for me. You know, it's it's going to be something something interesting. Um, like I said earlier, is like FromSoft would just see what their work work throw work throw. Oh man, okay, it's bad time. Workflow is like so they can make these things so quickly. Like Naughty Dog to see how how do they make their games look so good? Like even other games that look so good don't they don't get their in-game cinematics nearly as good as Naughty Dog does. Like I like the original Last of Us, not even the remaster in my memory. Maybe it wouldn't if I went back, but the original remaster last sorry the original version of Last of Us on on the PlayStation Three, the in-game cinematics in my memory look better than the witcher 3 in-game cinematics to me so like are they i kind of think they, they are like i don't think that's that's a faulty memory so like how do they do that like what, what's their fucking trickery like how do they get that how do they make them look so good you know so i i would like to uh to to, to see that but yeah any any dev yeah um i'd love to go see like uh, Team Cherry, how, how they put all the things together. I read recently that they used they used interns for some of the art in uh, in Hollow Knight, and I want to know like how much is that? And you know, if you break down their visual style, a lot of it is is, is quite simple shapes. You know, um, it's, some of them are, are very low frames of animation for a lot of the bosses. So like, but they're they're very clever with how, how much mileage they got out of those. So I'd like to see that. But yeah, yeah, and any anything if I had a chance to. Um, I don't know. 
if I would be able to, if I was invited, you know, or if I if I could contact them and say, hey, can I come come take a tour and talk to some of your devs? Um, but uh, if if I did have the time, if I did have the, have the opportunity to go, like with uh, if if Lily was okay uh, staying with the kids for a little bit, or if we could all go in some sort of vacation while we were there, uh, I would fly. Like I would I would travel to do it. Yeah. No, I dog had insane technology for Jack and Dexter. No exaggeration. They were at least twenty years ahead of time. Were they really? Damn. Oh no, I've been poisoned. Oh, assassinated. Oh no. It was you, you witcher. No. Your game sucks. It sucks. Which one is he talking about? It doesn't matter. All three of them. They suck. Just kidding. Only one of them sucks. I wonder if there's another dev game dev I would like to see more than that. More than those. Dang it, Rumpa. No, I think that's it. What was my first game? Mario Bros. Is it more stew? Whoa, why is there just a head? What? How? Oh. Who's been killing Microsoft Sam's? Waifu Chronicles. <laughs> Page one of one. That's it. <laughs> this is really uh. like designed for you isn't it because like there's enough now that they can just just fuck with you every week like, yeah. it's just a meme like non-stop mm -hmm. meme fest of course do you know how, like you can get ant farms yeah. this is a weed farm oh. yeah they're all they're all here making memes all right i think that's probably a good a good place to stop um with the waifu chronicles god damn it uh, before we go, thank you to Wife Divorcer Six for the 18 month resub. Thank you very much. 18 months in uh, the the Wifey Warehouse. Now that you're uh, are a Wife div Divorcer, thank you very much. Uh, Papa John's Napkins. Always good to read your name for the 13 month resub. Thank you very much, Papa John's Napkins. Is there something special about Papa John's Napkins, or is it just? He seems to think so. What do you think? That I noticed been. We only ate it, what, like once or twice? You know what I hate related to Papa John's napkins? Because we had them recently for the first time. I think paper straws should be illegal. Mm -hmm. Like, who who wants to drink something through a straw that immediately becomes soggy and your drink tastes like the straw? Like, it's fucking terrible. I hate paper straws so much. They're awful. They're awful. I'm not averse to them finding like a different kind of thing so they don't have to use plastic straws if that's real all that important, but paper straws can fuck off. I don't like paper straws at all. I used your name as me purely because I thought it was a ridiculous name. Oh, there you go. Okay. I think you might have said that to me before, Paper Papa John's napkins. I'm old enough that I can just enjoy the same things over and over again. <laughs> this fucking head on a pole. Bow of Chads. You'd rather drink without a straw. Yeah, I don't use many straws. I like a straw. But when you go to like, um, like a fast food place, like, how, what, hold on, how many people like you? You go, you go to McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's or whatever. Like, what? It doesn't have to be like a big chain. Any anything, and they bring you like, like a, like a, a, a paper cup. With one of those plastic lids on it, how many people like like rock that lid off and and drink it straight from the the, the rim? Do people do that? Papa John is legit legit nuts. He recently went on the. I saw him talking about how he ate so many pizzas. Wow, some people do that. Wow, I'm surprised. I'm very uh very sheltered here. I think very very sheltered. Oh, thank you, Bob Jones Napkins. Ariel Stannis says we subscribed for 24 months, two years. Welcome to, to your club, Ariel Stannis. I feel like you uh, you should have gotten here before for the amount of times I've, I've read your name. 
Thank you, Ariel Stannis. Hey, Lily. Uh, I think you're great. I think you're okay too, Joe. Also, tapping subscribe chan off and on for two years now. It's my longest relationship to date. Aw, thank you, Ariel Stannis. That's nice. Thank you. It doesn't say total, though. It just says just two two years in, in a row. So, yeah. 40 pizzas in 30 days. Thank you, Ariel Stannis. Two, two years in, in Pout Patrol. Paw Patrol is the new favorite. It's the new hotness. And our last message, I think, from Action Caterer. Just want to know, there is a mod who's going mental with creative mode. Wondering if that's all right. Also, Chiaki is not best waifu. They, they want... What do you mean there's a mod who's going mental with creative mode? Like, they, they want creative mode on or they have creative mode on for themselves? Uh, depends on how they... Uh, Depends on how it goes, I guess. I don't know. While the stream's down, we should probably turn creative mode off or whatever. Like all, like the mods should just like play the game normally with everyone else, or, or or that's it. I think. But right now it's fine. We're just having a having a hangout in in Minecraft. Thanks for switching to Minecraft. The cutesy sound effects in Stardew Valley drove me nuts, especially opening closing chests. Yeah, I can see that. Hold on, can I find these sound effects online? Starcraft. <sighs> Star, Star, do Starcraft, Stardew Valley sound effects. I fell for that. Uh, all right, I think that's it, everybody. Thank you very much for for joining in the experiment for the the Minecraft Discord, um, the our Minecraft server. Uh, I don't think this is going to be what we do every single week, but we we kind of eased into it and we got some questions answered eventually, right? It was just kind of we got there was a period of getting used to something. Beginning. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, I will upgrade the server. I think depending on how many people are here later, I will I will check in and see how popular it is when the stream is down. If people can let me know, um, if it was stuck at like capacity the whole stream that would be interesting information for me to know too uh if there's any mods or plugins that i that people really think i should should install or whatever then i will do so but uh i'll check in periodically and see how it goes um that's it so thank you very much everybody uh we'll do one more stream of this round next week and then we'll be done and then we will be um we will be uh, having a next round of questions. So there's going to be a lot of streams this week, actually, because there's going to be the three normal streams, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then there's the extra Thursday stream because of the Game Awards. And then there's going to be this stream on, on uh, another one of these on the weekend. Oh, man. Oh, fuck. All right, going to have to call Keely and ask him to postpone the Game Awards. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, That's the least you can do. Thank you for bearing with us as we um, we uh, got used to having the server. Everyone's having an end of stream brawl. But, uh, yeah, that's it. All right, see you guys later. Bye, everybody. Good night, chat. Good night, Minecraft server. <laughs> <laughs>